Hello everybody! Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what time it is where you are. I've left my water bottle in foreground range. Here we go, let's scoot. Hi! My kitty cat too. <laughs> she gets all the focus. Hello everybody! Happy Sunday! I hope you're having a delightful weekend so far. Scoots, thanks for the 52 month resub. Passing out coffee. I got mine. Mm. It's a testament to how much I needed it this morning. Well, needs a strong word, but it's true. Um, I normally take coffee with Splenda, and I'm completely out, and I'm, I don't even care. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe we're done with that now. Maybe we don't need it. Sports over. What do we do now? Well, I slept in today. Apparently, <laughs> I don't. I don't know what's going on over here. I slept in today. And then after that, I guess I'm gonna have to like get back to work or something. <laughs> My goodness, hi! But holy smokes, I had so much fun watching um, the b-boy competition yesterday. That was a wonderful time. I enjoyed every second of it. Let's get into remix and start doing something that might result in a weapon. I don't know what. <laughs> I guess we can we can mix and match. I was running scenarios. We got a weapon out of um, Normal Throne of Thunder. That's why we were there yesterday. So that was good. I'm... Remix has another week or so left. So it's not like direly urgent. But it's kind of getting sort of direly urgent. And I don't know if I'm going to play Remix next week. So if there's anything that I want, today would be like a good day to do it. Till the 20th till the Paralympic start. Oh. How still smells like skunk. I'm on my 15th load of laundry. Oh no. So bummed it's not coming back next games. It was really, really cool. Um, I I enjoyed I enjoyed it thoroughly. I also really liked our commentators on CBC. In a lot of sports, um, the commentators will be like they'll they'll talk about each of the competitors and they'll give background and stuff and they'll be like, listen, we are we are here to be unbiased observers and to break down the action for you. And then in some sports, they're like, we're here to be unbiased observers, but they like cheer a little harder. Uh, or they're like a little bit less critical of the Canadian athletes. And then in, in the breaking competition, they were just like, Phil Wizard! <laughs> Nobody beats the Wiz. Like they were not even, they were fanboying so hard. I don't, I don't know if um, anyone told them they were supposed to be unbiased, but if anyone mentioned it, or maybe that maybe it doesn't matter. I'm, I, I didn't mind, <laughs> but it was so funny. They were going so hard. <sighs> oh, man. Um... Well, I mean, for for uh, for lack of a better idea, right off the top of my day, let's do like a oh man, that's a lot of dailies. Let's do a little uh, heroic scenario. I still need a um, not a random one. We don't we don't do that. We do heroic crypt because as per trove tally, remix items. As per trove tally, I'm missing this amber blade, which is sort of what I'm after. I, there's three things I could get for normal scenarios, so maybe I should be doing maybe I should be in there instead. I don't know if I want to stress about the yellow farmogs. There are some nice ones. That in particular. I love the coral and teal Megara's Fang. But like, if I don't get it, am I ever going to think about it again ever in the rest of my life? Also, these are cool, but I do have lots of them already. Um, the outdoor mogs. The, the black fan's nice, but the black fan's also evil. So I don't know if we... I don't know if we'd pick that one out. We'll have to see. Bob B5 giving out a gift sub. Thank you very, very much. Women's clean and jerk this morning was so fun to watch. Oh yeah, I watched a bit of um the the men's 102 kg bracket. Um, I don't know the different weightlifting ones, but they 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 uh, I think it might have been because they they did it in two stages. They would pick it up to the hips and then like, Whoa! um, but that was very that was very crazy to watch. August 19th, loving my second mop tune right now. It does sound cool. They're just so enormous, and they're lifting so much weight. It's bending the bar. Like, it's just it's just crazy to watch. Like, they drop it when they're done, and the camera shakes because the floor shakes. It was crazy. Favorite to watch was the women's short track. Really exciting. I need a behind-the-scenes show for every single different category of olympic games where i can just see what they like to eat because i'm so curious <laughs> the really really like heavy class weightlifters must just be able to pack it away because that's so much 
mass to feed that you need to keep keep going. <laughs> God, God put fuel in me, go. Pandaria's last hurrah. Yeah. I kind of want to like, um, Amberblade notwithstanding, the one that I'm trying to get from this scenario, I kind of want to like pick out a thing and like put it on the, put it on the board, like put it on the, um, you know, I had like a currently farming graphic, which uh, doesn't work right now because I deleted the screenshot. <sighs> um, I want to do that. Although, sometimes it's a good way to get stuck farming something for longer than you meant to. Any of these things would be good targets. I don't think I would stress about any of these things. Yellow far ones are kind of tough to get. A lot of protein. Cal caloric needs Louie. Remember the dude who played the Mountain GOT needed like 8k calories a day. I did watch Sprint. Yeah, I saw that. Um, that was one of the reasons I was so excited to watch the track and field events in the Olympics was because I had come off of watching and really enjoying that documentary series. So I, um, although I will say that it got me really excited to watch a bunch of different female Jamaican sprinters and then none of them, I don't know what happened. None of them were in any of the events that I watched. I watched the 100 and the 200. Um, and I didn't see, I didn't, I, I don't know, I don't know if something happened or what, but I didn't see any of the, like there weren't Jamaican women in any of them, I don't think. Poor Jamaican, the 4x4 relay. Pretty good way to monetize sports with not that much money behind it. Also build some stars. Yeah. And Netflix like has a formula now for sports documentaries that at the very least works on me. <laughs> I will, they're, they're, they're very formulaic, but I eat them right up. Um, so they seem, they seem poised to kind of keep cranking them out. I know um, Carlos Alcaraz, who's a tennis star, a young tennis star, he's getting a series all to himself. He had like an episode in Breakpoint. I think he appeared in both seasons, but he's getting his own thing in 2025. Been heavyweights training for 16 months. The lifting is the easy part. The eating is the hard part. Man, I have so much respect for people that are able to just like... Or I, guess, I mean, I guess, I guess Abel's like who have the, the willpower and the discipline to like make themselves consume this this amount of like nutritious like specific foods um in order to support your athletic performance like that because it just like eating when your body doesn't want to is so hard hit or miss they have their own style sometimes a little too dramatic for me i'm just nosy and all i want to see like it's fun watching like the success stories and then working up to this tournament and then doing well in it or otherwise you know depending on how it goes but i am i just eat up any like any of like the more reality style stuff where they're showing them at home and they're showing they're talking to their family and they're like you know <laughs> they're, they're just like chatting in the car on the way to the gym um i i love that stuff i don't know why did we get lucky we're looking for an amber blade nope no amber blade neglecting sports for so long growing up finally learning national baseball olympics etc yeah, it's really, it's really fun to watch. Interesting to see people do people things. And it's, I guess, I guess, I guess I just build up in my head that these professional athletes are just like another, like, type of human being. Like they're like, yeah, we're the same species, but like, are we? So seeing and being like, oh, hey, <laughs> I'm bad at parking too, or whatever it is. I don't think any of them were bad at parking, but um, <laughs> like, it just, it's, it's fun. Maybe you're onto something series that tracks the buying of the Wrexham football team, how it affects the town was really good. Mm. Oh, man. I watched um, the separately from sports, but on the topic of Netflix documentaries, the Lou Pearlman documentary about the formation of the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and the Ponzi scheme that <laughs> the, that man was running and everything. That was a, it was a trip. It wasn't like the best documentary I've ever seen, but it, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I, although I kind of partied pretty hard anytime they'd play any snippet of a Backstreet Boys or NSYNC song. And then I realized what if instead of watching a documentary, I just wanted to listen to Backstreet's back again. And I think I may have been onto something with that, but uh, what is the best documentary you've ever seen? Ooh, that's hard. It might be one of the climbing ones. The climbing ones are really good. Backstreet Boys was a Ponzi. The guy that was running them, he had a lot of businesses and he did an enormous amount of fraud, apparently. Oh yeah, I liked uh I liked Cheer as well. That was fun. I gotta write all this down. You should rewatch Miru. 
<sighs> they did a weird thing. Netflix and their documentaries, they're kind of experimenting with how to use generative AI in them, which I kind of wish they wouldn't. They did a weird thing in the Lou Perlman one where they took words that he had written in his book and then they took footage that he had recorded for something or another. And they trained an AI on his voice, I guess. And they like puppeted this footage. They digitally altered footage of him to make him say the words he wrote in his book. So it's, it's words that he wrote down, but they like generated this footage of him saying them. And it was just so weird. It was like, why? Just, just have someone voice it over. It would be less weird than this. Um, there was, there was no call for that. And it just made me uncomfortable. Besides, it's not like they had any lack of uh, good stories from surrounding people. It was, um, I feel like they just, they're just, I don't know, trying everything. Because it would be arguably way more work than just having a voice actor read the book, the book passage while you have like some, some footage of people looking vaguely concerned. Like, <laughs> yeah, don't know if it counts, but The Living Sea, watched it in IMAX, don't know how many times as a kid. I don't think I've heard of that one. I go on documentary kicks every now and then. If you wrote a book, you did the audiobook too. Um, maybe. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't, though. It was from... When did the book come out? I don't know if audiobooks were popular back then. Uh, oh three. So I'm sure there were audiobooks in oh three, but... Gonna have to look up the Rexham one. Thanks for mentioning it. Anyway. Maybe we can get lucky in this. So much hyper around AI they want to shove it anywhere. Yeah, they got into they got into some hot water for using it in a true crime documentary to generate a photo of the the perpetrator, like as a as a teenager looking all happy go lucky, because I guess they just wanted to like portray how shocking it was that she had done this crime. So they, they they invented a photo, basically, which is just so weird. It's like, just, just, it's a documentary, you know? Um, and it's, like, you could argue that it's the nat natural evolution of when, you know how sometimes documentaries will do that thing where they'll get, like, actors to reenact a scene and they'll have, like, a voice actor, like, voice over it or whatever? And you could say that you're just using AI to do that kind of thing, but it doesn't come across the same way. And I also always kind of felt the reenactments were, like, really corny. Um, they're... Although maybe that's because most of them that I watched were from some show called, like, A Thousand Ways to Die. And they would reenact people just getting crushed by vending machines and stuff. Did this one a fair bit yesterday, too, after I saw you do it? Nobody in my group got any mog. Oh. It, um, this is how I got all the mog that Hunter could get from it. I guess I'm not, like, sprinting at my, my very fastest through this. I could probably be moving a little bit faster. Actor reenactments were always the best kind of Cordy. Still can't believe that was a real show. I don't know if I learned anything important from that show, aside from be careful on stairs and don't shake vending machines. But I guess those are good life lessons to have, you know. I have yet to be crushed by a vending machine because I give them respect because... Because sometimes people die. Any luck? We're looking for the dagger, Amber Blade. No, not that time. I am a little... Well, I guess I'm not really doing any other instances, am I? I was going to say I'm a little hesitant to just, like, slam the scenario because eventually I'll hit instance lock, and if I want to farm something else, that could be a problem. However, I don't think any of the, any of the other things that I was going to farm need instances, so... Ask <laughs> Liz, did I? Why watch that? Um, I mean, don't you want to know? <laughs> watch a show where people get crushed by vending machines. I don't know. I was a kid. It was on TV. <laughs> I don't know if I was changing the channel or seeking things out. It was just kind of like, here, this is on. Someone's watching this. Mm. Some of them were shocking. Like, some of them were, were, um, were not shocking in, like, a horrifying way, although also that, too, but just like a, wow, that's really bizarre that, that all those things came together. Had to have been in the response to the era of worst case scenario books. Now I want to find out more trivia and like what it was actually called. It was like a... Uh, 
American docufiction docufiction anthology series aired on Spike from 2008 to 2012 also aired on Comedy Central uh, program recreated unusual supposed deaths true events and debunked urban legends so I guess not all of them were true um Ron Perlman served as the narrator in every episode since the third. Huh. Oh yeah, that's right. There was like a warning at the beginning of it. The stories portrayed are based on real deaths. Names have been changed. Do not attempt the action. You will die. <laughs> it's okay. I won't. My goodness. Uh -uh. It's not good if the feather, if the, uh, the angelic bulwark's popping. We're so close to early access, it's kind of crazy. Me too, Stan. Yeah. I really could stand to make like a calendar. <laughs> I just don't know if I have it in me. Plan out like what, what the last things that I want to do, at least on stream, are for a while. Because we got a few more days to do this and if we want to. I'm tempted to to give up on remix weapons early, but I don't. I don't know. I got I got tired of farming the uh, the radiant echo stuff because it felt like the the loot drops had just turned off, and I didn't really want the offhand of the cloaks that badly. Anyway, at least we got the shield. When does it not a good stream is? <laughs> play play submarine games. Swim with sharks. Very happy. Yes, yes. Two weeks seems like nothing, and all the time in the world right now. Yeah, all the time in the world's dangerous. <laughs> There's nothing like feeling like you have tons of time to make it completely vanish instantly and overnight. Uh, loot spec to get the recruit shield. I don't know for sure, but I was just in case. Any luck? One box? Two box? No. Can I res, uh... Ah, they're running back. One of these days, she's going to actually play Subnautica and we're going to have hyped it up too much. How much of a bummer would it be if I finally turned it on on stream one day and I'm just like, huh, this is okay, I guess. I, it, was, it was just like when we played Stray. <laughs> like, all right, well, I'm a cat. That's cute. Stray 2.0, yeah. Finished all the pre-patch stuff. I've been getting bullions because remix just makes me sad. Hmm. Would you draw any comparisons? Actually, I don't know if you've played it, but would you draw any comparisons between Subnautica and Raft? My motivations are corrupt. I've been asking because I've been like kind of wanting to play Raft for no good reason. Mainly, what I would do in Raft was just like fish. And like build up my little my little house and stuff. I didn't really like exploring the islands that much. <laughs> I'd go get some fruit seeds, grow some pineapples. I had no interest in fighting the bears or in anything to do with the story. I have played both. They are quite different. Oh, okay. In a crafting sense, sure. Okay. I think I was just thinking, well, you know, they're both like on the sea. <laughs> right? Something like that. Not that the setting really has anything to do with how the game feels. What if instead of Remix, I did raw gold farming and we could try to get enough gold to buy out the rest with raw gold farming? So like <laughs> world quests and dragon races and stuff <laughs> to try to get the, um... well, I also have that hunter to level, don't I? I could do that in the pre-patch event. Pre-patch event leveling is pretty rough. 
It's not slow, it's just boring. <laughs> Raw gold mog farm time? Maybe. Because there's only like 20 days or whatever left on that vendor. There's only four mogs that I don't have, and they're like the four that I wanted the least, so it's not that surprising. That pole arm's kind of cool, but I'm never going to use it in my life, but it's kind of cool. Do I really want to spend 100k for a pole arm that I'm never ever going to use? I could get a I could get a war bank tab for that. I still don't have the hundred k war bank tab. I'm working with two tabs. I've got one for pet pet stones and stuff, and then one for gear. One point four five mil. Still debating the mount. Mm. I love that mount. It's, it's almost exactly what I wanted. I used to ask for them to put just like big expensive gold sink mounts in that were literally gold. Don't know how you do a DHX pack with no gold. Yeah, it's definitely not a good idea. <laughs> I won't try and sit here and convince anybody that it's smart or well thought out or based on anything other than my feelings. Uh, bought the Mad Merchant Mountain Pet a couple weeks ago. Nice. Option to use Warband Gold for the auction house? No, you have to pull it first. You have to uh, withdraw it onto the character that you're shopping on. Well, that seems good for gold still. One green found was over 15k. Mm. And you gotta sell it though. <laughs> that takes a lot of patience. Can you fix the character selection screen? I really can't. <laughs> I, I, I'm very flattered by your faith in my power though. Oh, it did. <laughs> Does Flabby have any more mog selling tips? Flabby, uh, Flabby keeps his good secrets close to his chest, which I think is what makes Flabby successful. <laughs> a lot of the things that, um, that help, from my observation anyway, because I don't do them, but a lot of the things that sort of separate Flabby in terms of gold making is that he's willing to put in a lot of effort and research and do things that are really annoying that no one else can really be bothered to do. Um, so he's like reading up on like blog posts and he watches YouTube videos and he's in discords and he like is just kind of like listening to what gold makers are talking about. And he has a good understanding as well of like the economy. So whenever Blizzard announces a change, he can extrapolate from that what that might mean and what markets might be good to get into. And he's also not shy about spending hours <laughs> in a day if he wants to like posting and reposting auctions. Um, so... I've inadvertently given Flabby much gold over the years for a bog. I know. <laughs> I've seen a few screenshots. Oh, man. Sold for 23k. <laughs> Hours of time and millions of gold to make more millions of gold. Yeah. Fishing in Stranglethorn. SOD back in the day. Starting to feel like that could end up not being fun. It doesn't really... It wouldn't... The reason I don't do it is because I don't have the patience. I The, the auction house posting and canceling gets really old to me. I used to do it, and I don't have the patience for it anymore. So I just accept that my gold making is not going to be on that level, um, and I don't, I don't do it. Yeah, people have fun in different ways. <laughs> exactly. I don't think he does it all year round. What's up, chat? What's up? How you doing, Scarlet? <sighs> I'm having the laziest start to my Saturday. Sometimes, some days I'm late because I was like running around doing a bunch of stuff and being like really together and active. And then some days I'm late because I slept in. <laughs> Just, uh, it was weird. I don't know if the cat knocked my alarm off the nightstand or if I did, but like I woke up, well, and then I, my neighbors were like leaving for a trip or something like really early in the morning. So that woke me up for a little bit because the windows were all open. But um, I woke up for a second time, I guess. And I like looked to check the time and the clock was like nowhere to be found. I keep like a physical alarm clock on my nightstand and either myself in my sleepiness or my cat had like fully punted it off that nightstand onto the floor. <laughs> it didn't break or anything. Um, shout out to the clean laundry that I have yet to fold that is <laughs> on the floor in the crash zone. I should fold that today, but it did save my alarm clock. Do you mean Sunday? Yes. Yes, I do. How you doing? 
Not much of a Diablo 4 player. Shop has WoW skins for each class. Oh, that's cool. Coffee need to kick in. All right, all right, everybody. <laughs> we, we've heard it. Did you wake up feeling like, no. I don't even, I think, I think we do different. Di I, I don't, she doesn't even sing that lyric anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no shame in a floored robe. This is an entirely self-serving sentiment. It's the... I used to have a laundry chair, but the laundry chair is now behind me supporting plushies in my office. So, um... And it's... Yeah, the, the furniture's been moved around. So now, laundry comes out of the dryer and goes onto the bed. And on a good day, I'll just fold it. Not usually at the same time, but I'll like come back and I'll put on some music and I'll fold it and that's fine. But then if it's not a good day, the day ends, it's bedtime, my laundry's still in the bed, and I go, well, oops, and then I'll move it. Um, it used to be under the chair, now it's onto the floor, until such a time as I can actually get around to it. Which is incredibly lazy of me, because I don't even own clothes that are hard to fold, <laughs> and I don't even have that many things. These are not huge loads of laundry, like, actually doing it takes usually, like, ten minutes. Kezo3, thank you for the 59-month resub. Do you learn or bother to sell items? BOE Epics from Antorus? I learn them if I need the appearance. If it's something that I already have and I get a dupe, these days I just give it to Flabby so he can sell it. <laughs> um, because I know I'm not going to have the patience and I know he's already posting stuff. And uh, I have benefited from the bank of Flabby on enough occasions that anytime I can like throw a chip back in the pot, it, pro it probably works out. It doesn't balance out, but you know. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. How many people buy furniture that's too large to fit in a car? Uh, I don't know. That sounds like something I would do. <laughs> I would be looking at the box being like, yeah, that's probably fine. The seat folds down, right? Nope. Get the straps. Get the bungees. Uh, do you think Mop Remix will come back in the future? I think a different remix will happen one day. I think Mop Remix I th will be either done forever or done for a very long time, though. I'm not expecting to see this return. What if you hang them up to dry? Integrated storage? Don't need to pack up at night. Well, no, they're already dry. <laughs> all of these clothes are already dry. I do hang a lot of my things. All of my all of my athletic and yoga wear gets um, hung to dry. I have a rack that I can pull out, but it's kind of a pain to like work it out of the closet. Um, so sometimes I just drape like the yoga pants across various like door frames and stuff. Um, and then I put them away eventually. Kind of when people move around and have to do it in creative ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. There's no wet laundry on the bed or the floor. It's all, it's all dry. <laughs> Although you can't leave it on the floor for too long if you want it to stay clean because the cat will nest in it and then it gets dusty and then you're like, well, this was, this was all a huge mistake. Coffee going. <laughs> Thought you would put them in a dryer. They were in the dryer. Not the yoga pants, but the other clothes were in the dryer, and they go on to the bed. <laughs> you know what? I can make a flow chart. <laughs> I can do a diagram. <laughs> Tell if my cat was laying on the clothes because she smells like a dryer sheet. <laughs> Yeah, no, cat does also go on clothes in the bed, this is true. She also goes in the clothes when I'm wearing them, so... <laughs> Comfy magnets. Not sponsored. Litter robot. Best thing I ever purchased. I've heard a lot of people really like them. I don't think I'm going to get one as long as I have Kira because she's just so picky about her litter box situation and she's blind so she's really nervous about getting into anything that she can't see and figure out, especially if it's making like noises. Um, 
And I'm, I'm sure that I'm sure that maybe it could work, but it's just not worth the money for what appears to me to be a pretty slim chance. But maybe one day with a future cat, if I ever got another one. Started D4 up for the first time and found out I just don't care about it. Oh, that's a uh, was it part of the free weekend at least? Did you have to buy it to find that out? I guess the operative question is how much of an investment it is. Because if you found it out for free, then that's great. <laughs> good, good thing to know for free. Any luck? No? We're looking for this amber blade. Still the free weekend? There you go. <laughs> Future cat sounds like a kid sci-fi cartoon. Found it out for 60 gigabytes. Mm, there you go. Like it on console? Haven't played it all that much. Haven't played it since I launched. Hadn't finished the story, but it's like learning a new game at this point. Yeah, I never, ever tried it. I played a, not a decent amount, but a chunk of Diablo 3. I would come back for a season every now and then. I would always get quite behind my friends. Um, and I would get kind of overwhelmed because I never felt... Like, I could play by myself, and I would. I would play by myself, and I would level alone, and I would just take my time to, like, read my buttons and stuff. But um, it was like trying to play WoW versus creating your own build as a newbie compared to, like, grabbing a WoW head build. I was always, whenever I tried to do content with my friends, just like wildly behind them. And uh, you end up just getting carried through stuff. I think I saw too much of the treadmill behind it to ever get into it again. Yeah. I think I have, I think WoW kind of fills my need for if I ever need... <laughs> A, a treadmill game, a game that I can just put like endless. Well, no, I guess I'm, I'm misusing the phrase treadmill game, but if an endless time into, I'm pretty happy for it to be here. It's only nine forty one, so I can't talk about food yet. <laughs> ask me, in, ask me in a little bit, and I'll, uh, I'll. Give you the uh, the updates and the latest things that we've tried. Give it an hour or so. Not that anybody wanted to know, but <laughs> what do you want to talk about, food? Oh, I try. I've 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 had. I've been I've been thinking. <laughs> I I try I try I tried a meal or two. I had some thoughts. I'm gonna I'm gonna try some more things. Um, you're allowed to be hungry. I for sure will be hungry by like eleven. I had cereal for breakfast today. I was running late. Just had a key lime pie. We were talking about key lime pies not that long ago. Started the conversation. <laughs> All right, fine. I want to as well. I, yesterday, after stream for lunch, we were kind of like scrambling for something to make. And we were talking about ramen, but I knew if I ate just like instant ramen, I was going to be like real headachy and over salted and like, just it just wasn't 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 gonna work out for me, especially because it's not like I had a ton of fresh veggies on hand to like beef it up with. Um, so I wanted to make something else that was just gonna have like a little more, I don't know, to it. And I'm I'm in my kitchen looking through my pantry, improving. What I ended up doing, because I didn't want to take longer than like a half an hour, I prepared some quinoa in the instant pot because I had some quinoa and some broth. So I I chucked that in the instant pot to cook. I took some canned chickpeas and I tossed them in some cumin, paprika, tiny bit of chili powder, salt, pepper, and olive oil. And I roasted them in the oven on a, tr on a pan. Um, I made a little sauce out of like some sour cream and lemon juice and salt and pepper and a little bit more cumin. I would have put garlic in it, but I was completely out of fresh garlic. And then uh, I wanted to chop up some cucumbers to put in it, but I, the cucumbers weren't good anymore. <laughs> So I toasted up some tortillas and sliced those into strips and put that in there as well to get even more carb going on. And it was like really yummy. It was it was nice to eat. And I felt really good after I ate it, but then like an hour and a half later, I felt awful. I was like this, I'm missing something. Cause it was like, I thought for sure, cause it was like quite a bit of chickpeas that that would really carry me in terms of protein and also like fiber and stuff. But um, I ended up, what did I do? I had like, I don't know, like a granola bar and like a glass of milk or something just to like make me not hangry enough to get through until dinner. 
leftover Syrian food that I was gifted from yesterday's wedding. Oh, oh yeah, how was the wedding? Oats, cornflakes, raisins. In the summer, you can add strawberries. I have um, strawberries that are ripening in my planter outside right now. They're uh, on my on my balcony. They're doing really good. Um, I want that weapon. Y'all ever tired of getting your steps outside? So you do laps around the kitchen table while making and eating a meal. Oh man, you're you're dedicated. Chickpeas are great. Not super high in protein compared to firm tofu. Yeah, I I bought a couple bricks of firm tofu to make. I don't even know what. <laughs> I just I know I need more. I was I like I was looking around at macro calculators because I don't I want to eat enough that I feel good, right? Like I'm not trying to undereat. I'm not trying to lose weight. Um, I would like to maintain my weight and maybe like build a little bit of muscle. Not like I'm not trying to get ripped or anything, but I just want to be able to <laughs> support a little bit of extra strength as I continue working. And, uh, and I was like looking through, so I was like, okay, so if I need this many grams, how much is in a egg? <laughs> okay. How much is in a cheese? <laughs> like I was like trying to think of what I eat in a day and like going through it and trying to figure out how on earth can I affordably fit enough of um, the different things. And also it wouldn't hurt me to eat like an extra vegetable here or there. I do eat some, but it's definitely not like the five a day or whatever you're supposed to be getting. Uh <laughs> Anyways, what I've landed on for right now is I brainstormed a couple more meals, like the chickpea bowl thing, that are like, they they, they, they cover a bunch of the categories. I'm going to try and get used to just like um, grilling up like bricks of tofu and then having them either in like burrito bowls with like a chili sauce or salsa or in like more of like a teriyaki bowl with like veggies and rice and stuff. Um, so those are two kind of like formats that I can play with because also I'm not that creative and I don't want to spend that much time cooking. But then to kind of like gap fill, uh, I'm going to try protein powders again. I was convinced I didn't need it, and I probably don't. Um, I'm sure I could get enough protein from food, but just to kind of make it easy, I think it's just for the convenience factor. I'm going to try and add not like a ton, but like maybe on the days that I do yoga, just like having a cup of that um, after practice to kind of help gap fill a little bit so that I'm not getting like, because I'm so tired. Oh. <laughs> Um, Flabby plays the AH math game. I play the nutritional math game. Back to my previous point, how hard eating enough protein. Yeah. I do get lentils. Those are the main component of my curry dishes, which is another one of like my kind of breaking things here. But it's again, one of those things where if I eat it, um, I'm, I'm hungry again, pretty like too soon. It doesn't keep me full for long enough. And you could say, yes, well then eat more. But like, it's just so hard for me to to get through that. I'm eating big servings. I don't even use the regular bowl that comes with the dishes. I eat out of a mixing bowl because that's the only thing that fits it and also doesn't make me spill when I'm sitting on the couch because I don't eat at a table like a human being. Been to over a dozen weddings, but this one really stood out. Uh, I did not get the pre-patch offhand. I'm kind of giving up on it unless they tweak the drop rates of the gear again. I spent like two days grinding that event on a warlock and I got like one or two pieces of gear total, not even considering like <laughs> weapons or anything like that. Like something happened. Dragonblight sucks. Least favorite zone to level in the pre-patch. Yeah, I would agree with that. At least it's not like breaking down laggy anymore, but it's not great. Two of the offense dropped for me this morning. Oh my goodness. Did your parents allow elbows on the table? Strictly forbidden. Kind of depended on who you were staying with. Um, but I'm pretty sure it was generally frowned upon. <laughs> I got a staff that I didn't have, but it wasn't remix exclusive, I guess. How much fish is in your plan? Um, I'm not counting on getting fish every day because I can't afford to eat fish every day. <laughs> and because um, something, 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 Mercury. So some now and then, like on a day that like we have it or we want to, then that's great. But um, I'm not budgeting for it because like I was looking into like salmon burgers, for example, because I love those and that's fish and they're pretty easy to make. And it was going to cost like, I don't know, like like a box of four of them. So two meals for the two of us was over $20 just for the patties, not considering anything else that goes into the meal. I just can't I just can't deal. I can get a brick of tofu for three fifty. <laughs> Ha 
I don't want to get too much into the specifics of my numbers because I think that food food online gets a little bit weird. Um, and everybody's needs are their own and I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea and try to like, I don't know. <laughs> I am not, I am clearly not an expert in nutrition, but I'm just, I'm just looking at it, I guess is what I'm saying. There's a, there's a resource in BC that you can, there's like a dietitian website calculator that you can use. And it's not going to be perfect. I'm sure if you are really like struggling, then you want to see an actual medical professional, like medical professional, you know, get blood work done, that kind of thing. <sighs> Firm tofu, edamame, Greek yogurt, recall you're not a fan. Yeah, I was looking at a lot of different um, meal plans and ideas and stuff, and people go so hard for the Greek yogurt. I did buy some more of it. I don't really like it that much. It's okay, but like I eat one spoonful and I'm like, okay, that's good. Can we move on? <laughs> I don't want to do it again. <laughs> once was fine. No, I can't. I don't do cottage cheese really. Like cutting into little dipping sticks, dusting cornstarch, frying it, dipping in peanut sauce. Mm -hmm. Everyone is obsessed with cottage cheese from what I see right now. How is the cheese budget these days? I was building a grocery delivery order and I there was Gouda on sale and I put it in the cart and then I was like, I don't know, man. And I like took it off the cart. <laughs> I make sure we have at least cheddar in the fridge, but I haven't been going through as much of it. Um, and then I have a ball of mozzarella. I've been meaning to make a lasagna for ages. I should check the date on the ricotta that I bought. That's It's like, it's sealed, but it's been there for a while. Grease, we eat yogurt with walnuts and honey. Try it. I can't. Walnuts are so expensive. Nuts in general, like I get nuts. If I get like the cheap brand of trail mix and it goes like super on sale, then I can do it. But if I just like bought like a container of walnuts, it's gonna be like 15 bucks. Um, so if I can get it, if I can get them included in the cereal, that's always good. Peanuts for the win. Yeah. It's hard being cheap and picky. <laughs> I have nobody but myself to blame. I'm doing all right. I can afford peanut butter. Um, and uh, if I'm really fancy, I can I can get some other stuff. So I just, I need to just like snack a little bit more on in, in general. Or like put together meals that are comprised of different snacks and stuff because something like yogurt, I mean, you can eat it for breakfast, you know, uh, but in the context of like lunch or dinner, it doesn't really make a ton of sense. It's more of like a snack thing. And I, I'm not really somebody that snacks. So I need to just start being like, okay, for lunch, I'm going to have <laughs> five snacks. Got my first cup of coffee of the day. Time to chill to a Hazel Street. Snacking on sunflower seed kernels, fairly cheap. So small, keep me busy. But yeah. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> I think I'm concerned about it because I've, I'm getting a little bit more in tune with how how I'm feeling and where it's coming from. And I'm realizing how much my what I eat is affecting my mood specifically. Like, I always kind of knew that was true, but I'm starting to really, like, feel how true it is. That, like, my, my energy levels and my anxiety levels and stuff are, like, directly correlated with, with what I'm eating. Um... So it's trying to trying to find that golden that golden ratio of like, I need to be able to afford to eat this. I need to be able to have the time and the energy and the organization to keep the to buy the things and keep them fresh and whatever and like put the thing together. I need to be able to eat it on time. I needed to fill all these different nutritional needs, and uh, it's I don't know. It's a lot to ask. <laughs> I get why like professional athletes sometimes will just have like a professional chef that handles nutrition for them and then like makes all the food and someone else does all the shopping it's a lot of work but you hate when that stuff turns out to be true something i'm like getting more familiar with oh we got it yes that's the amber blade i was after Woohoo! yeah all right we're done with heroic scenarios is the difference but something that i'm getting more familiar with as i'm getting older is the difference between knowing something and this is going to sound really stupid. Knowing something, like, because you read it and you remember it and it's a fact that you know. And then, like, knowing something in that you have this, like, experience that makes you actually take action in relation to those facts. Like, it's hard for me to 
live according to wisdom that I've just read, unless it's something that seems like very obvious to me, like, like don't, you know, skydive without parachutes, that kind of thing. So, you know, it's, it's knowing things like, oh man, you need to get enough sleep to feel better is something that like, I always knew. And when I was young, I just didn't really like do it. And then you get to a certain point where you, where you kind of paid enough attention and you've, you've felt out the difference and you've kind of seen how it works out long term. You go through a, a nice little burnout cycle or two to realize, oh, I actually cannot sustain that. And it is less productive in the long term. And then you actually like learn it and you start prioritizing it. I, I need to learn every lesson the hard way. I can't, <laughs> I just don't have the wisdom to like watch like a, like a little video about a morning routine and be like, okay, I too am going to get up at five and take the cold shower and do all these things. Because even if I know that they work for that person, I need to, I need to feel each and in, each individual thing in my own life. And uh, that's kind of where I'm at with the food right now is I'm just paying more attention and realizing that some things are just uh, more important than I had been giving them credit for. Because it's hard to like do all that stuff, especially when you're like kind of struggling in the first place. It's really hard to have the, have the, the energy and the motivation to, to deal with something like food or sleep properly. But you're starting off on such a back foot if you don't. But that's a lesson that I had that I have to learn like personally, like no amount of somebody telling me something smart was going to make me know it, even if I believed them, if that makes any sense. Okay. Uh, follow up question is now what? We got the dagger we wanted. <laughs> we got the dagger that I wanted. Do I hate myself? <laughs> I read a hundred plus self-help books. Didn't work. Yeah. I think that... I think that all of the self-help books that I've read have helped kind of like give me some foundational knowledge and like be able to recognize those principles when I see them in other, in practice in various places in the world, which helps. But I wouldn't say that I read any one of them and then just turned my life around like that. <laughs> you know my answer to that one already. Uh, the add-on is called Trove Tally. Anyway, this is a nice offhand, but you never see offhands. And also, it's awful to try to farm, apparently, because Jade Forest is just a, a gross zone to try to get stuff out of. Um, what else could we look for? Have a good day. Love your streams. Take care. See you later. Thanks for stopping by. But I was, I, for the longest time, I'm like frustrated with myself because I feel like I know these things and I have to like learn the same lessons over and over and over and over and over again. And I'm like, this is such a waste of time. Why am I dumb? Why am I making these same mistakes over and over again? And for me, at least right now, it turns out that if I, if I, as long as I'm kind of paying as much attention as I can bear to that process, it is getting me somewhere. As frustrating as it is to be like, I'm just making the same mistakes or I'm just thinking about changes that I'm not making. It's part of it's it's part of the process. Like you, I spend a lot of time thinking about something before I work up the courage to try it, um, and I spend a lot of the time making the same mistakes before I'm able to crawl out of those habits. It's just frustrating because sometimes it feels like every time that you mess up and you reinforce a bad habit that you don't want, you're just making it harder and harder to break. And that's true, but if you can pay a lot of attention to how you feel about the whole process, I do like these scenario daggers. I might do more. Do I have um? What do my instance lock look like? Saved instances. Zero recent instances? It's weird. I want to do... Oh, there they are. I'm like, why can't I do a normal scenario? I can do a normal scenario. There we go. Being reminded over and over again, shame myself for making mistakes was holding me back. Yeah. Look on the bright side, you got Moose and Kira. <laughs> yeah, I, I, got, I got there, I got there. Should I do some uh, questing while I'm while I'm waiting in queue? 
On one hand, there's more things that I need from the Dread Waste than from Jade Forest. But do I really want the things that are from the Dread Waste? Not really. <laughs> Not really. Why don't we uh, drop some of these quests? Don't, don't want them right now. Clean up the log a little bit. Oh, you can abandon it from there, too. I remember somebody telling me about that. You can just right-click and abandon them off of the tracking section over here. I did get my Amber Blade. Awful place. Jade Forest isn't terrible if you're looking for a farm place. Really? Hmm. I might be. <laughs> just maybe. But yeah, I'm happy I got the I got the dagger I was looking for. I like that color of it. This is the same scenario, but on a normal difficulty. There are three different mogs that I could get instead of just one. However, you get one less chance because you don't get an extra chest in the middle from like the gate guardian NPC. There's a, I think it's just the, it's either just one or just two chances per scenario this time. Because, yeah, for Pandaria, my plan was just to kind of poke around at maybe the Cloud Serpent dailies. I don't know. Those are pretty long. Windswept Isle, eastern part of the zone. Okay. I'll uh, I'll check it out. I'll poke around. I don't know why I always kill this pack. <laughs> don't want it to feel left out. I think I want that black fan. <laughs> Dailies are a trap. Do the eggs get full rep? It would be more, it wouldn't be really for the rep. I have the rep already. Um, I'm exalted already with the cloud serpent. It would be for extra chance, extra boxes for chances at loot from the zone. Any luck? No? I wish there was some way I could use this bronze in pursuit of these weapons. Does it cap you eventually? It should. But my... My um, saved instances wasn't noting it as counting. It said that I was 0 of 10 still. All right, let's get back into queue for the for the normal scenario. We're going to keep abandoning these things because I'm not too worried about the dread waste appearances. And let's go poke around a little bit in the jade forest. Actually, you know what I want to do is I want to... Because, yeah, there's two items. That's one of them, the effigy. But that fan, that's what I really want. It's better lit from the other side, but what are you going to do? I'm going to take a screenshot of that. It's the Pandaren decorative fan. It's an offhand. Don't mind me. Maybe uh, shrink it a little bit. There we go. Hazel, I need your help of the 400,000 icons in the game. Can you tell me which one to use for my Warband Bank tab? Uh, yes. <laughs> Cheese. That's what I did anyways. I I spent that same, I had that same thought. I was scrolling and scrolling and scrolling being like, well, I want something unique. <laughs> this is an all priest group. How often does that happen? 
I mean, maybe a little bit extra often in remakes. <laughs> a, little, a little more popular than normal. Uh, no Radiant Echo event should last right up until The War Within comes out. It is, as far as I know, not going anywhere. Yeah, you're, you're fine. I got what you meant. Being able to transfer currencies, making it so much easier to gear up ults in the pre-patch. Love this. I could probably stand to go log into my, like, start shopping out of my, my bank tab on my, on my alts and picking up pieces of gear for them. I guess it depends on if I'm going to farm any more stuff, but I don't really want to. <laughs> any luck? No? We're not even getting a box for this one. Although you have a chance to get the items, I guess, from the last boss specifically. Oh yeah, I got some, I got some gloves. So stuff is dropping, it's just not the, uh, the ones that I needed. How does leveling in the event work? You do the mini events and you do the big boss. You do the little mini bubble events and then you do the boss when it comes up and you just keep rotating that around basically forever. Bringing up some rogues and warriors and whatnot from season two to current. Yeah. Nothing fancy. Yeah, no, it's really straightforward. And that is true. You can catalyze it all for Mog as well as uh, set bonuses. I don't think I'm going to be able to gear up all of my alts with the gear. Unless I go out of my way to grind a little more. But we can certainly... Um, oh, we have some goods to spread out. Ignore the frogs and the beer running slip and slide. Yeah. Prioritizing bosses has been has been good for me. Yeah, there's a few things to get aside from what's just on the vendors. There's a couple of transmogs that will only drop for characters that are underneath level 70. They're recruit items. Um, the shields, the offhand, and then three cloaks are not easily available from other things. The cloaks were from the Shadowlands pre-patch event, so those were otherwise unavailable for the moment, unless you had them already. The um, And then the shields and the offhand had some, some obscure source. Wow, had had some articles about the specific pieces. Can't wait for Shadowlands remix. Unironically, <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be kind. Of, I think it could be kind of good if I could like collect the rest of the Shadowlands mod from all the covenants and stuff without needing to um, without needing to bother farming anima. That would be pretty huge. But once I can do Shadowlands raids super cozy and easy, um, then maybe it won't be a thing. Yeah, bronze instead of grinding. Exactly, yeah. Not farming a million anima would be great. Yeah, Remix Islands would go really hard, I feel like. It would be... I would have a lot of fun doing that. So the imps don't actually seem to have loot, generally. Uh, I'm going to scroll back up. Windswept Isle in the eastern part of the zone. This one? Remix with Encrypted Mythic Plus. I don't think there would... I don't think... Uh, I don't... I guess I don't know. Mythic Plus and Remix don't feel like they would mix well to me. Oh, maybe these things do drop loot. I got two bronze. Sorok around the eggs. Oh, okay. Why is Anima not a warband resource? I don't know. Cause it's a cat. Like you can tr you can move it around. It's just it must have something to do with like the anima getting dunked into each covenant because even on a one character you can kind of lose your anima sometimes because you're like oh wait i had a bunch of anima it's on kyrian i need to go switch back to kyrian so i can pull it 
Unless they, unless they merged that. I don't remember if they ever did. I'm guessing it's like a weird technical thing that they haven't gotten around yet because they have let us move our anima around. Like you can you can buy anima to anima chunks and then mail them to your characters. So, <sighs> jinx, yeah. Fury Forever, thank you very much for the 24 month reset. Happy two years. Two years, time flies. Good luck in your transmog farming in the world within. Thanks for being the best chill streamer to watch. Aww. We put people on the moon, I'm sure they can figure it out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how much overlap there is between Blizzard and NASA. It might be different people. <laughs> Loki kind of down to run rips for 15 hours. Oh, another shaman. The Shockholm Syndrome. Shockholm Syndrome! <laughs> mm. I'm ready to be like wildly wrong. Blizzard's actually filled with it with just astronauts. <laughs> Is this a chill stream? I wanted a cozy stream. Yeah, are we cold or are we warm? What's the deal here? <laughs> S tier typo. I thought that they was like a I thought you were coining like a new a new phenomena. I thought you were, uh, I thought this was branding. I thought it was good. I thought that was a term for when you uh, want to stop playing your shaman, but you can't do it. You've got Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> if the stream was a garment, it would be a sweater. Oh, we're we're getting gear drops. I've had a, the same belt three times in a row. We're hoping for this Pandaren decorative fan, this offhand transmog. It's uh, one of the nicer looking appearances, I think, that I don't have. Would it be a blue sweater or a gold sweater? All I wear is green nowadays. Green, 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 green. I do, I do get the reference though. <laughs> it was the dress and then it was like the Laurel Yanny thing. It was a strange time to be on the internet. Jade Forest, one of the better looking zones. Yeah. I think this may be my favorite zone in terms of just like aesthetic. I'm a real sucker for a cherry blossom forest. <laughs> I like bamboo, I like jade. You know, I like tigers. Got my conquest PvP dagger. Very nice, congratulations. Don't mind me. I don't think I noticed that the cloud serpent nests seem to have either, like seem to be like surrounded by jade pillars basically. Save tender in case Ashadar comes back. Considering buying the transmog guy, what should I do? Um, the question I would ask is, do you have the transmog yak? It's true that you can use the toy in situations where you cannot use the yak, but in my experience, it doesn't come up that much. <laughs> also, was there any data mining showing that we were going to have um that Ashadar was coming back? I thought I saw something, but I could be just like. Tripping. <laughs> Imagining things. Yak is good, because he won't talk back. Always forget I have the toy, use the yak, yeah. The one thing that the toy did come in very handy for me recently was realizing that I could use the toy to transmog a character that was basically level 1, and I had just rolled them, because before I would level a character 10 levels, just like showing their heirlooms looking all generic and stuff. And uh, being able to put them in some kind of a outfit, or even just like hiding a bunch of the pieces of heirlooms from right from where the character creation area is nice. Because an allied race, 
can mount right away. So those ones I can get on the Yak, but if it's a, a non-allied race. <laughs> Listen, Irchi and dating himself is like <laughs> a classic combination. It's it's We wouldn't trade it for anything. The new vendor pet will be nice in raids. Oh, man. Plus, it's cute. Finally able to catch a live, not the VODs after work. Welcome to the live show. I am uh, laying waste to the Sorok of, <laughs> of the Jade Forest right now, trying to get him to give me this fan. Have you started cleaning bags and bank? Realized I had 10k artists in metal because I'm not a crafter. Um, not formally, but I've been kind of kind of chipping through it here and there as I, as I see it. I'll probably do like a whole stream of it at some point. Um... Like, just go through everybody's bags and bank and just get rid of a ton of Dragonflight stuff. Or stuff in general. <laughs> make, make some room. Got 10k golden herbs. I wonder how much gold I'm going to have when the remix characters get released and I can, like, take their gold and put it... I know it's not that much gold, but I've got like 10k on this character, and I bet you Squidgy's got something like that as well. <laughs> it might be a little bit. A little seed money. How do the, do the turtles have anything? Uh-oh, they do... <laughs> I guess everything has something. Getting gloves. We want the fan. About three thank slots. I am the broke now. You got one more than me. I'm still sitting on two. I'm uh I'm gonna grow my war bank very slowly and only when I'm like really fed up with not having enough room. I figure if I'm if I'm chilling with two slots right now, then I'm gonna do that for as long as I can get away with. <laughs> Even if I could afford a third one and then only go for it if I feel like I, like, need, need the space. Because sometimes for me, if you give me too much space before I need it, I get overwhelmed. <laughs> like, I don't want it yet. A raw gold farm idea you had earlier? Kind of appealing to me right now. I always found it so satisfying to just fly around and do dragon races. Because it's like 500 gold each and they're pretty fun and they're pretty fast. Plus, now you get to try them on all kinds of different mounts and stuff. Why is Trial of Style so restrictive? Hmm. Command easy. Yeah. Plus, you know, what, what better way to say goodbye to the Dragon Isles than taking, like, a big flying tour of them than doing all these Gold World quests and stuff? All right. If I get the if I get the fan, I'll do I'll do gold farming. Question is then, when do we get the fan? Nice chill activity for sleepy brain. Hopefully no more trees. Oh, I wouldn't get your hopes up for that. <laughs> I have seen a few trees. Restrict you from even buying the other ensembles if you are the character with the currency. But you can move the currency around. Trial style tokens, I think, are warbound now. But that is weird that you can't just shop for all of them on the one character. That it's kind of like <laughs> unnecessarily restrictive. We are going underground and no trees. But underground trees. <laughs> trees grown from the light of the big mysterious crystal. They're still soul bound? Crazy. I don't know why I thought you could move them then. Character bound. Oh, I'm so sorry. Maybe they really want you to have to, like, do the trial of style on the relevant armor type <laughs> to get the sets. Can't wait for the next world tree. It will be called... Win... I don't get it. <laughs> I think you... I think it's going over my head. I don't, I don't understand. Oh, windowsill. <laughs> okay. 
I I think I get it. <laughs> I'm like 65% sure that I get it. Done three events, gotten two gear drops. Not sure if good RNG or if they buffed it, maybe. Interesting. Interesting. Individual events. Okay. Hmm. Might be worth looking into. The Lorax was actually trying to prevent us from finishing dragon races for the whole x pack. What if something terrible is going to happen? We've overheated the dragons. They all start breathing fire uncontrollably. Sorry, turtles. It's not your fault. They're only a year old. At least they made it to the water. Alright, one fan, please. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't be too impatient. I remember when we were grinding in Kunlai Summit for... I forget what it was we wanted there. It was something specific. We were there for, like, weeks. It felt like. Multiple, multiple three-hour streams of grinding. And those mobs were a bit denser than these ones. It was a book? That sounds right. The book, yeah. And we did get it, but maybe I shouldn't expect to just get the fan <laughs> on my first, first like half hour out here. But I wanna have the patience to follow through with something. I don't wanna just skip around like a butterfly. I was going to use some buff scrolls, and then I thought, for what? <laughs> We're one-shotting everything anyway. What was your favorite Olympic memory this year? I have a bad case of recency bias, because I want to say Phil Wizard. I was so excited to watch it the whole time. I had to wait until almost the very end of the Olympics, and then it was everything I wanted it to be. <laughs> he did one move where he was like... In like a freeze or something. I don't really know much about breaking, so pardon my lack of knowledge and so you know he's like sat up on his shoulder on the floor with like his legs over him or something in like a cool little pose and then he starts scooting himself across the floor by doing like windshield wiper arms and it was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life <laughs> um, however I also watched a lot of other things that were really exciting it's just the ones that happened more recently stick out more in my brain the men's hundred meter uh, sprint was final was wild. All of the gymnastics was super exciting to watch. Mm. The sport climbing. <laughs> Did four mini bosses killed Lich King. Got three pieces. Seems good. Did you watch any breakdancing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was talking about with uh, with Phil Wizard. He was our Canadian b-boy. I watched all of the men's finals. I think I watched all the women's finals as well. Um, as well as a good chunk of the round robin battles. It was extremely fun. <laughs> Saw the speed climbing. Your description of frightened spider climbing up a wall was dead on. Just crazy how fast they go. The artistic swimming had some really cool moments too. The French did like this uh, space routine where they like launched somebody. 
casters are so strange, getting my mage to 70 quickly, so used to melee. Mages are always kind of cool. But yeah, I'm a bit sad that it's basically over now. <laughs> I had so much fun seeing so many different activities and... I don't know what I'm gonna do now. Really like Arcane Mage. Ending ceremonies in half an hour? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Playing melee always freaks me out a little bit. Hi Hazel, hope you're well. Hi Sandy Cheeks! Right back at ya. More time for documentaries? I suppose so. Rhythmic gymnastics with the hoop was cool. I saw the highlight of the uh, the thriller routine from the Ukrainian gymnast. What's coming after the war within? Midnight. <laughs> and then there, we even know the name of the one after that, although I've completely forgotten. They they announced the the, the the overarching concepts for three expansions at once. It was very strange. I remember watching that BlizzCon being like, Chris, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, this is a real big gamble. What if it's just a... It's the Stephanie Meyer novel reimagined. The Last Titan is the third one. Mm. People are most excited for Midnight, Stunwell and Elves, yeah. I'd be hyped for that. <laughs> just fully Twilight style vampires. Werewolves. The war can get a big, a big new moment. Yeah, I don't know what, what WoW's going to look like after that, but got a little bit of time to figure it out, certainly. <laughs> it's going to take us a few years to get through all that. Like that they did it. Excited for the next expansions. The one thing I did like about it was a lot of people were speculating that this one was going to be the last one. Like that the War Within was going to be the last, the next, the one after Dragonflight was going to be the end. And I guess people have probably speculated that about every expansion that's ever come out <laughs> for this game. People are always like, it's over. But at least this time, um, Blizzard's like, listen, <laughs> there's three in the pipeline. And we're going to tell you about them. TPC was the last ever. Yep, yep. <laughs> we get rid of the Horde Alliance. Horde and Alliance, Team Jacob or Team Edward. <laughs> Do you think they'd have an expansion where we lose? I don't know. Maybe we suffer a setback or something. I don't think people would be very happy if we properly lost. It's just... Especially because you still have to have people, like, clearing raids and stuff, so there would have to be, like, some cheaty narrative thing where it's like, ha You defeated my fight, but I had the bomb the whole time, or whatever it is, and then, like... It just it just feels bad when you've uh, progressed. I hope we lose in the war within. Azeroth explodes. That's how we finally get a StarCraft MMO. Oh man, we we're planting the new world tree. It's finally growing. It's finally starting to grow up. You know the the fertilizer's working real good, and then the whole planet explodes, and then we have to plant a new planet. <laughs>
I killed an English Ivy once. I'm gonna lose that X pack. <laughs> Hazel? Yes? What's up? How do you plant a new planet? <laughs> um. Some kind of cosmic sci-fi garbage, basically. Planet seeds, silly. There you go. <laughs> So you, you harvest the core of the last planet and you put a toothpick in the top and the bottom of it. And then you sit it in a glass of water in space. Um, and then, you know, water would freeze in space. So we all have to stand around it in a circle and keep it warm with our bodies. Uh, catch a planet, seeds the new planet, taking notes. <laughs> Big glass. <laughs> Thinking about going from healer to DPS. Don't know if I'll survive DPS queue times. Yeah, I've uh, I've always struggled with that. I don't queue for things as a DPS very often. The trick is, is probably multitasking, having something else you can work on in the meantime. Titans are huge. They have big cups. <laughs> trick is going tank. bought myself a sheet cake because I am yes. Can't wait for Azeroth to sprout hearts and legs and look like the m, &M guys. Oh my god. <laughs> they were always up to something too. Magni finally starts hearing Azeroth again but all, all she can say is I'm Groot. They'll change Silver Moon and stuff for good? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, Remix ends August 19th. It's on the calendar. Uh, 10 a.m. at least Pacific server time, something like that. Another another week and a day. Come <laughs> back me understand a group. I am Azeroth. What if it wasn't Zalatath at all? It was the M&M &M people. <laughs> That's how WoW finally starts doing uh, branded, sponsored content crossovers. <laughs> I'm getting flashbacks to taking my Neopets for breakfast at the, the Neo McDonald's. They were always sold out anyway. Wow, Twitter had a poll and 48% of people are rooting for Zalatath. Oh, man. It's excellent. <laughs> Neo McDonald's? Yeah, Neopets has had a, I mean, a long history. There's some YouTube videos that go over the different people that have owned them and the different weirdness that's gone on. But, like, uh, at one point they were doing, like, brand tie-in crossovers. And there was a, you could buy, like, McDonald's digital food for your neopets there was a there was a, a tie-in but there was also weirdness with like it was never worth it to buy food <laughs> it was always too expensive and it was like weirdly limited quantity um and your neopets could just eat the free omelets so there was like never any point of doing it as far as i knew plus they would never starve to death they would just you know glare balefully at you as they got hungry omelets where it's at <laughs> Whirlwind Abyss, thank you very much for the 21 month reset. Radiant Echo weapon for a newly 70 mage. Yeah, staff is a good pick. Ordered a subway breakfast. Yes. I'm a, I'm a bit nervous because I was thinking about subway recently. We, we stopped by there and picked up some dinner. And at subway I get sandwiches because that's what you get at subway. But over the years, they've ne they've always been trying things. There, there's always something going on. The one near me was advertising a foot long churro. Um, <laughs> and uh, I remember when they used they tried to do pizza. They were doing they were into soups. Subway's always done strange things to try to like. I don't know. I don't know what it is they're trying to do, but like, they're always trying something. 
So what did you get for breakfast? Churro. Yeah, I didn't I didn't order it because I actually really like churros and I don't want to uh, be let down by Subway's version of a foot long churro. <sighs> you expect hash browns to be like long and big? They have a foot long chocolate cookie. I that was on the poster as well. It it was. <laughs> a foot long? Yep. Three out of ten. Listen, I'm listening. What did they give you? So much churro. <laughs> Listen, I'm not judging. I love hash browns. I would eat that, <laughs> eat that cookie. I used to really like Subway cookies, but they don't sit well with me anymore. To the point that sometimes if you get Subway delivered here, they'll give you a cookie for free, and sometimes we don't even eat it. Subway pretzel? 7 out of 10. Oh, that's improving. They're climbing up in the rankings. They sent me six penny-sized hash browns. Oh no. What if food but long? I mean, I'm probably more likely to get a foot-long Subway pretzel than I ever was to get the pizza. I remember the pizza was pretty bad. They used to do like flatbread pizzas. One shot nearby makes them with Nutella, which I don't like. Usually here you get an option to get them with like a caramel sauce for dipping. And that's good. <laughs> Especially if they're really fresh. Mexican food and beverage? I don't know about beverage. There used to be a Mexican bakery that would make like Mexican like baked goods and pastries and desserts and stuff. And I never knew the names of anything. I would just point at it and then they would sell it to me and then I would eat it and it was always delicious. But I like, <laughs> I didn't know any of the names. Some of them were puddings. They used to be bigger than McDonald's hash browns. I used to love the same as at Quiznos. I don't remember if it was Quiznos or a different one. Who are the people? Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Johns? Jimmy June? They, they would like promise that they would get it to you crazy fast and the drivers would just go ripping through town. <laughs> like blowing through stop signs and stuff because they had to get you that sandwich stat. Um... I never, I never could really um, find something that I wanted there because, uh, I don't know, the veggie sandwich combinations that they had, like the dressings that they had, just didn't do it for me. It's not the best sandwich I'll ever get in my life, but <laughs> Subway's reliable for me because I know what I like. It's the same pretty much everywhere. You just have to try to get one that's active enough that they don't have like old veggies. Uh, what's happened here? <laughs> Amazingly clean, three times cleaner than any other fast food place. How do I undelete a message? <laughs> Appreciate it about Subway, never greasy. All right, let's see, it's about 10.30. We've actually managed to fill up our, our bag with, with stuff. We haven't got the thing that I'm looking for yet, but the, the farm rate's not awful. I guess it's not going crazy fast, but it's not that bad. What do you think about Domino's? I get Domino's sometimes because it is acceptable takeout pizza with the deals and stuff, it's pretty affordable. Like their their loyalty program makes for pretty cheap pizza. And because the delivery and the pizza production is disgustingly fast. Like they, <laughs> that is an industrial global pizza machine. Like they, they, uh, they can crank them out 
it's uh it's definitely not my favorite pizza place to get but like if i need takeout pizza and i need it pretty quick and i don't want to spend a ton of money obviously it's takeout it's going to be more expensive than just like cooking at home but um i have the app <laughs> because it's you can you can get some like deals garlic cheese crust is good but i'm gonna take a short break i'll be right back My, uh, my moosey bear is sleeping in his bed right by the gate. He's so cute. He's so tired. The middle of stream is always like the, the most sleepy he ever gets in his life. It's just, I guess it's like right in the middle of his morning nap. Because I can go, I can go like see him and he won't even pick up his head. He'll move his eyes to look at me and he'll like stretch out and be all cute if I like pet him or give him a hug or some scratches or something. But like... He won't even he won't even pick up his chin. Moose tired. How's Kira? She's good. She was uh she was around earlier. <sighs> Something I haven't seen in ages. A group listed for the oily invertebrate. Food quality was overall, in my experience, vastly superior in, U in Europe, fast food and otherwise. <laughs> really invertebrate bad. I can't remember if I got the thing to drop or if I just gave up and bought the pet from it. I still don't have the back piece. I still do not have the back piece that comes from it. And I don't know if I'll ever get it. Like that's, that is an uggo grind. A lot of the more esoteric mugs from Shadowlands, I just never, never got. I didn't do like the, the A bomb stitching set, the whole thing. Never really, never really bothered. It just every time, every time somebody would talk to me about it and ask me if I'd done it, they would preface it by by saying, "This is the worst thing ever. Have you done this hideous grind?" And I'd be like, "Nope." And you're not selling it. <laughs> it does not sound like a very fun time, so I just never did it. Got a got a little spooked. Wanting to do the Armageddon recolor? Mm. The A-bombs are cute. They are. They are. They're very fun. All of the Meldrax's NPCs were surprisingly adorable. <laughs> Spent in the Horrid Dreadwing instead of doing the rare. Yeah, that's fair. Man, I remember... We spent ages in... The Venthyr land. What was the Ven Revendreth? We spent ages in Revendreth killing that big gargan for the mount that he dropped i would uh i would like have character on character on character right there ah my apprentice threw in the towel for the gilded waiter that was just crazy <laughs> we ground we tried for so long oh man i want the slime that brings me cake I've seen that one once I don't remember how much I spent on it, but whatever it was was worth it. I think I got a good deal. I think I, I found it for like 170k or something. Sometimes you just want it to end. The important thing is that I have one. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's been collected. Oh, they're so cute too. Better odds to get that mount than to see the monster spine claw in the timeless isle. AH has the best drop rates. I used to buy all kinds of cheap mog on the auction house, but maybe I bought it all. <laughs> I don't know. I don't uh, often nowadays when I check the auction house for um, appearances that I don't know, and I sort by price. Um, it's, it's not usual that, I mean, you, you can get things for like a couple thousand gold, but I wanted to buy stuff for like, I don't know, 500 or less. Yeah, sire, Ladi Nas, right? <laughs> Mr. Ladi Da, Ladi Nas. Get to use the light shards to kill the mobs. I must have gotten lucky with that one, because I don't remember hating it that badly, but it was kind of gross. There are so many different ways to collect things in Shadowlands. They were very creative when 
stocking that expansion with pets and mounts and toys and transmog to collect about all of the different things that you could do to like spawn and interact with and whatever to these rares sometimes to a fault um i still think that tahanta was so rude <laughs> having a rare that is listed in your mount journal as dropping a mount and then having it turn out that it won't actually drop that mount for you unless you are not only the correct covenant but you also had to have like a secret a bomb follower criteria met um and it was just 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 rude <laughs> Did do a lot for collectors, which was really nice. Yeah. But yeah, overall, I liked having a having variety in the farms in Shadowlands. I remember getting like the slime serpent. <laughs> that was really cool. They you were doing a lot of different things. It was more than just these things are on the rep and these things drop. There was lots of lots of unique and different kinds of uh things that you would learn and do and little tricks you would pick up. Remember Tor Tormentor is a Torghast? Unique mocks of specific bosses. I was grinding those just for... I was following the Tormentors of Torghast spawn rotation just for the achievement, I think, for Veilstrider. And uh, I had like a... I had a spreadsheet schedule. <laughs> I would set reminders and alarms and stuff to, to wake me up or to like remind me to log on and do a specific Tormentor. Protoform synthesis I actually really enjoyed. I found that to be very reasonable. You could get like a mount or a pet every like two or two to four hours of farming assuming that you had the uh the recipe for it some of the some of the lattices were a little bit tougher but um i didn't find that the actual moat farm was unreasonable at all long time watcher on youtube haven't been able to catch a stream recently how is it going everyone welcome i hope you're having a lovely weekend going good here going good here i'm Fighting with my patience, because I want to keep farming these Sorok in the Jade Forest in Remix to try to get this um, this fan offhand transmog to drop. I've decided that's the last thing that I really want to grind out of Remix weapons. But I'm kind of fighting my patience, because it could be a long time, you know. It's nothing that says that it has to be within a given day. And I kind of want to do either more, like another check out of the Radiant Echoes event. Because there was another piece or two I needed from there. Or just, we were talking about raw gold farming. There's a, a vendor that sells transmog that is only going to continue selling that mog until the end of August. And uh, I've been having fun kind of like saving up like 100k and then dumping into another piece. And there's only four pieces I need left from it. Mod after Raptorus, still my rarest one because so few people engaged in it. Yeah. I think some people had trouble getting the, the schematic to drop in the first place. Or if you didn't have add-ons and stuff, you might never know that that schematic could drop. Um, that wasn't a farm that... People were doing it, and people do have it, but yeah. Which vendor? The Black Market Auction House adjacent one that sold the gold beetle mount. Yeah. That's, that's where I've been dumping my gold. <laughs> Radiant Echoes event is fun now that people just chain it instead of doing it just at the beginning of the hour. Yeah, it's much better. Being able to transfer Radiant Echoes between tunes is awesome. Yeah, it was a great demo of the new currency transfers. punished into playing my main or scared to play alts it's great i felt like i kind of had to play alts a little bit to try to get some of those recruit transmogs 
that's my biggest complaint with the pre-patch event is that they've 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 done it again with the the weird persnickety exclusive mods i'm going to be a priest for the war within my gnome priest I think they actually intended those bugs. Do you think they intended the um do you think they intended the remix weapons or do you think it just kind of like happened or do you think they intended them and they thought there was going to be arsenals but then there wasn't arsenals and they were like oops. <laughs> Happy little accidents. Turn between my devoker, my brand new frost mage. Frank really takes a sweet time dropping off his disciple. Is it a Professor C Ketchup breath? Hi, Hazel. How goes it? What's up, Dances? How you doing? You feeling ready for the War Within? Intended to add recolors. Didn't think through the acquisition. Mm. Mm. Looking for my phone. Oh. <laughs> that mom died all by itself. I didn't even do it. My goodness. Can't believe just 11 days to go. Haven't started thinking about food prep or anything yet. I was uh, thinking about what I want to do for meals around the war within. But then I realized I'm <laughs> just going to eat the same stuff I always do. I'm not re nothing's really gonna change. I'm not really gonna be, like, if anything, I'm gonna be gaming a little less than I would like to, because I'm, I bet I'm still gonna be working on raid guides at that point at this pace. Um, so, <laughs> I'm probably just gonna eat the normal stuff. Couple takeout meals. I did buy a frozen vegetarian lasagna to, to cover a night or two. Um, but <laughs> I don't think I'm actually gonna do, like, a big production this time. It's my plan as well. Stay away from the food, dude. More hot pockets. Mass preps and things. Tradition to watch the WoW episode of South Park and also some of the guild. That's really fun. Hmm. Let me see. What happened to Saturday news? I am putting it on a hiatus for the time being. I have a, a video that I haven't finished putting together yet. I've recorded it, but I need to get it cut together that talks a little bit about it. But the short version is that I just got a little burned out and lost some confidence and haven't felt able to, to get them together well enough and on time. So I'm taking a break from the format to give some space to do raid guides and then maybe try some other stuff. This is empty. <laughs> that water is empty. Uh, no, no, not, not, no. <laughs> I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but I'm not quitting YouTube. <laughs> like I wake up on Saturday, always watch your YouTube. Yeah. I do really appreciate that. That is very sweet. Happy still rocking the streaming side of things. Good company in the morning. Yeah, this this feels this feels pretty sustainable. I've gotten very in a rut, I think, in YouTube, and I've gotten very like it's gotten hard to hard to harder and harder to make videos over time. And I need to kind of <laughs> shake that up somehow and loosen up and relax, which is a lot easier said than done. Because I used to do all kinds of different things and I would do them pretty often and I would get them together fairly quickly too. Like I wouldn't spend three, four days working on a single video. 
And as they kind of evolved, they ended up taking longer and longer. And then I like sometimes they would be basically outdated by the time I finished them. So I would just can them. And then it just gets harder and harder to like sit down and look at it. You need more shocked faces in your thumbnails. Yeah. I also have a hard time um, figuring out what what I want to put out and what should I put out and what does the world actually need and <laughs> am I am I doing anybody any good versus am I just wasting everybody's time kind of thing? Um, I worry a, a lot. I worry way too much about it, which is not actionable information, but. Yeah, no, I absolutely put way more expectations on it now. And it makes it impossible to do anything. So I need to I need to work through that. Uh, I don't plan on doing anything to my hair. <laughs> I'm sorry, I feel like I'm letting everybody down. <laughs> I feel like I'm very boring. I know this is not rational, it's just feelings. But I feel like I'm just so unproductive and boring and all I ever say is no and all I ever do is quit things and it's just like why am I here <laughs> what am I doing and it's so it's very disheartening and it's not anybody's fault um, I'm very lucky to have anybody that's looking for my content in the first place I'm just uh I've got my confidence got a little shaky I do play in for 4k 60 fps I cap it at 60 I don't even have monitors that go over that I need some more water. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Okay, we're back. See you later, Zaga. Have a good sanctum run. Every event dropping every half hour this week? I actually don't know what's happening with the schedule of that because they, they changed their original plan when they adjusted how the event worked and upped it to every hour. So I don't know if they're gonna flip, flip the zones every half hour or not. They might. <laughs> I think we're just gonna have to find out. I wouldn't be surprised if they left the mass is, but I, I suppose it would still work if they if they bumped up the cadence of it. And I had awful dreams this morning about my aquarium. I had dreams that I had done some kind of a thing to get. I, I had dreams that I had cleaned my my siphon, the tube that I use to pull water out of the aquarium when I'm doing water changes. I had dreams that I cleaned it with bleach to get rid of like an algae growth in there, but that I hadn't successfully rinsed it out somehow so that when I did a water change, which is weird because I don't even water change water in there via the siphon, but anyway, in the dream as it happened, I had accidentally gotten bleach in my aquarium. It, my fish were just like dying horribly one after another. And it was like a really big aquarium that I've never had in real life. And it's like all of these really cool, interesting fish are just like getting horribly ill and perishing. And I like, was trying to figure out what was going on and why the chlorine hadn't, like, off-gassed in the tube. And it's very strange. Standing in front of the portal? Guess I'm about to find out. Poor captain. That is probably where some of the anxiety for that dream came from, is um, my, my remaining cherry barbs are dwindling in number. And we did lose captain in along with one of his compatriots in the last month or so. <sighs> there, everybody was good, but then I did a water change and for whatever reason, maybe the stress of it, they are getting older. Um, we've had those, we've had those fish for a couple of years now. Um, and yeah, two of them, two of them just went pretty quickly. So there's only two left. <laughs> Um, I'm basically just kind of keeping an eye on things and if the rest of those fish go, I will clean up the aquarium a little bit and then maybe look into putting a, maybe like a bed of fish in there. Just one in the 10, it might be nice. We'll see. But um, I guess uh, I guess losing those fish bothered me more than I thought because it's been kind of kind of getting to me. <sighs> what did you feel about the new studio where they'll make smaller scale games? Uh, first, I've heard of it. Neat idea, if true. A lot of their most successful projects have started off as like smaller little projects. Hearthstone was just like an experiment. This 
smallest pets tug at my heartstrings a lot. It was also it was just really bad timing as well. Not that there's ever a good time. And sometimes fish die. It's they're 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 not they're not always the sturdiest of creatures, even if you 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 do you do the, the right things. But uh it was I think it might have been the day where I was working with the vet about Kira, or it might have been the gate day. I don't recall which one it was, but it was some very long, very bad day. And it's like late at night and I'm at my sink washing dishes and I look over at the aquarium and I see a fish go by me, but he's like upside down and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> oh gosh. True, saw the news and wow hit. Seems like a good idea. Hmm. Trove Tally is the remix add-on that shows items. This one um, that shows a uh, weapon weapons, the exclusive drop weapons and stuff. Weapon weapons. Yes. That's that's the one that you're looking for anyway. Now I'm debating whether I want this 100k shield mog now. You found the scarab shield. That is a good one. <laughs> I bought that and I don't even tank. And if I was going to tank, I was going to tank on Barnacles. Maybe I need to set up a warrior tank just so I can use the shield mogs, like a warrior or a paladin. Are those really the only two tanks that use shields? That's crazy to me. <laughs> that could be so shiny with it. Only warriors and paladins. Monks, demon hunters, death knights, druids don't use them. Enjoy a nice Warcraft themed small game. Lots of genres they can play with. One thing that Blizzard's always been a little bit tough with is they're sometimes behind the curve at adopting new game trends. Like they they want to put in like a, a hat into the ring for each of the major game formats that are that are popular at a given time but they take so long to get it together that the trends kind of like it's too late by the time they get it done um and it's not always like a complete disaster um sometimes they're able to carve out their own niche hearthstone i think has done very well but something like heroes of the storm i feel like was just too late um to to really like eke out a a viable place in the in the momo genre and if they can maybe hit some of the smaller trends a little more quickly, a little more flexibly. For the survival game that they already can. Yeah. Cough, cough, battle royale. Torghast was kind of like a roguelike. Uh, I am farming for the Pandaren decorative fan. I've got a screenshot of it above my camera here. It's an offhand drop that can drop in the Jade Forest in Pandaria. So I'm just, I'm just running laps trying to, trying to get it. It's not that one. And good luck with Overwatch's timing until they ruin the game. Yeah. Overwatch was so exciting when it first happened. It's still crazy to me that it was that long ago. What BlizzCon did they announce that at? Was I there or was it one of the ones before I went? When did Blizz announce Overwatch? 2014. Okay, so it wasn't the one I was there. It was probably the first BlizzCon that I ever like watched on a like a a virtual ticket <laughs> I can't believe it's 10 years old that's crazy remember that one Metzen started crying that and then the moment when they taught when they unveiled uh wow classic are the two blizzcon memories that stick out you remember I don't remember what year it was but you remember when they were on stage and they were kind of doing the opening ceremony and like jumping around to the different stages to talk about the different things and they jump to a stage and this guy just starts talking about ice cream. <laughs> and 
for like are they gonna do it they're not gonna do it. are they gonna do it what is he saying <laughs> Ian was that really Ian I don't I didn't even remember that it was Ian Releasing their own ice cream flavor. Was it Brack? Announcing the Blizzard Baskin Robbins crossover. As soon as he said vanilla, my arms was in the air. Yeah, that was fun. I wasn't even, I was hyped by it and I wasn't even hyped to play classic. Like I knew right away it wasn't really gonna be my thing. But I was just, <laughs> I was like, I, cause I had, I really firmly believed they would never do it. Cause I think they said on a few occasions that they would never do it. And, uh, just, so to see them like actually do it was incredible. Gonna rain tonight. I think some HC is on the menu for a bit of a classic fix. <laughs> Cozy, rainy summer night. Hardcore classic. John Heights taking over Dungeons and Dragons or something like that. That's cool. It's got a lot of experience. Should probably get gold to pay for my new shield log. <laughs> the more we talk about it, the more I'm like, I want to farm gold too. But like, I need I need the fan. Otherwise, every mob that I kill, if I don't get the fan, ultimately, it's just wasted. Absolute classic example of sunk cost fallacy. <laughs> Have you seen the standard issue shield transmog before? Only drops in Scarlet Dudes and Tears Fall. I'm not sure if I have. It's too warm to not get the fan. Fan's important. I'll hail fan overlord. I would say that I'm not gonna clean up my bags until I get the fan, but I'm, that might not be up to me. <laughs> We might have to might have to scrap some of this stuff. Every time I get a weapon, I get a bit excited. It's like that could have been the fan, but it wasn't. But it could have been. Better luck getting them from weapons and yeah. If I wanted boxes, I would probably need to start a new character, because I've completely cleared this zone on Priest already. So there is a, an argument to be made for making a new caster that can get the offhand and questing through the zone all over again. Has the Lord run insignia on it and everything. Oh. Hi, Hazel in chat. Hi, Aveshkov. How are you doing today? You know what I want to do in the War Within? I want to go fishing. <laughs> I want to catch some fish. I want to cook them into food. I want to see if any of it sells for anything. I want to mog a fishing hat. Find an underground river. I want to go fishing. I love new expansion fishing. So long to farm the two-handed axe I wanted to mog that when I finally got it, I didn't use it. Ah, but you got it forever now. Do you run them wild? Yeah, expansion-specific professions again. You're, uh, you're going to start it fresh Kazalgar skill. There's no benefit to getting any older profession leveled up. Love it when people trade me mock and remix. People are so nice. Do you think most WoW viewers are playing on their other monitor while they watch? Betcha a bunch of them. Um, and then I know sometimes people will have it 
on in the background while they do other stuff around the house. You know, some people will stick it on a phone or a tablet and they'll clean or they'll garden. We've gone on the occasional walk before. Guilty. Four monitors. Chores. I mean, I won't rat you out, but I heard there's been the occasional uh, Zoom meeting multitask. Can confirm, also great stream for cleaning. Doing the same remix farming right now. I want this fan. <laughs> One fan, please. It's a problem, I want it too badly. Things mainly drop for me when I'm when I'm relaxed about it. <laughs> Getting too invested in the outcome is a great way to burn out early. Memory farming right now? Just can't remember what for. This is the last remix weapon that I'm going to worry about. There are more that I'm missing. I'm missing some, like, 30-ish. 32, I guess. There will be 31 more left that I could use on Priest, at least. Even more if we're counting other armor types and classes and stuff. But I think this will be the end of my stamina. It's nice doing this in a 476 character, though. I remember we first started group farming or mob farming on Squidgy when she was not quite finished leveling yet, and it made a big difference when I got her item level the rest of the way upgraded. The go-to is to play Final Fantasy XIV while I watch WoW, and play WoW while I watch Final Fantasy. Keeps a good balance. Keep a balanced MMO diet. If WoW was a food, what kind of food is WoW? <laughs> Late night sleepover style questions. I feel like Animal Crossing is a cookie. <laughs> and Stardew Valley is like rice pudding. Because I love rice pudding. <laughs> Doritos and Mountain Dew. That well, would be like a buffet. Appetizers. Pizza. Beat the Celestial Tournament. Thought it would be longer. Well, Snub Nose, thank you very much for the brand new sub. Appreciate it. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. Lasagna. But each layer is a different kind of meat. Burrito, it has everything. Rice pudding with coconut milk. That does sound good. There was a clip at the end of one of the seasons of Alone that I've seen where they were talking to the person at the very end about what how they were doing and they were talking about having had food fantasies and they were like, man, Doritos? I don't even normally eat them, but like if you had a bag of Doritos on you right now, your life would be in danger. <laughs> like like this guy that's like been in, this person that's been in the woods for, you know, months. <laughs> basically starving to death being like man I could go for some Doritos right now C cinnamon roll except the basic the baker sometimes mistook cinnamon for cumin I have to buy cumin in like big bags the little ones that go through too fast such a five My food cravings have been letting me down. I've been wanting chocolate, but then I get chocolate and I eat it and it doesn't work. <laughs> like it doesn't satisfy the craving at all. I don't really enjoy it that much. It's a, uh, I mean, I guess it's good long-term, but. 
you play any horde characters regularly? Mm, most of my characters are alliance. I do have more horde alts now. I don't really think too much about their factions. This character's horde. This is a this is a dark spirit troll that I'm on right now. But there doesn't seem to be a meaningful difference between alliance and horde characters for me now. I can use the same gold and the same items and trade things and use the same warbank and join the same groups, join the same guild. One off in, please. We've had so many of these same bracers. Will it put them all together? Yeah. Nine nine spirit walkers bracers, eight spirit walkers gloves. Six, seven, eight, nine spirit wakers hoods. Today's feeling a pizza delivery kind of day. I had a frozen pizza fiasco last night. I baked it in the oven for at the required temperature for over the required time and I was eating it and I realized it was still like dough in in the middle and also like towards the top like it was the crust was really underbaked so I put it back on a I slap it back on a tray and I put it back in the oven and I bake it for another like 10 15 even minutes to the point that it's not like burned but it's like quite dark and it with well, the crust was still really gummy it was very strange I ate it anyways because <laughs> thing cost 10 bucks and uh, I was not in the mood to find something else to eat, but yeah, not not ideal. I don't know what happened. Maybe I'll try a higher temperature next time. I've had those ones before. Maybe it's the oven. I don't want it to be the oven. <laughs> I'm not in the mood for it to be the oven. Had that happen to me once. It's not even pizza at that point. Yeah, not great. I get groceries today, so I'll have more, <laughs> more things to work with. Some people feel like the game isn't WoW unless the factions are killing each other. Why do you think that is? I think a lot of the branding and marketing early on in the game was very much about the faction choice. And when it... For a long time, the faction choice was everything. It dictated who you could play with. Like, amongst your friends, you guys had to decide, are we Alliance or are we Horde? It was it was a big deal, and there was a lot of identity built into that. And I think it's natural that, that some people feel that's very strongly tied up with, like, what makes WoW WoW. And it might feel a bit different now that it's not as big of a part of the story. It can do without the faction war. It got, I mean, I can't complain about the story because I don't follow it closely enough to really be invested, but I felt that it was maybe a little repetitive and that we're consistently doing this thing where we're fighting each other and we need to band together to make an uneasy alliance to deal with a greater threat. And then it's over and then we're fighting each other and then we need to band together in an uneasy alliance to deal with a greater threat. And at a certain number of times you're like, why don't we just keep the uneasy alliance and just like, you know, there's going to be something. <laughs> Original Warcraft games were built around that narrative. The only reason I went Horde was friends, slowly converting myself to the Alliance. There used to be a lot more strong, like, set stereotypes, too, about what kind of players played each faction. I remember in kind of 2009 when I was started, there was this idea that that the alliance was more popular with kids and that the horde was like the cool grown-up faction because <laughs> we don't need to be the hero or whatever i don't know it was it was pretty upset it was pretty cringe um i don't know if those things were ever widely true but there was definitely like a stereotype of like the the male human paladin who was like a, a squeaky you know like the 11 year old kid and uh, nowadays, I don't feel like people are really <laughs> assuming anything anymore. When you got ganked, you'd say, I guess school's out, Alliance are home. Our faction pride was a bit obnoxious as the years went on. I just wanted to be an orc DK. Didn't like that you had to choose one and couldn't play with your friends. Wish you could do more with the opposite faction in the open world. 
I always, the thing that reminds me about factions is when I'm going to like queue for like a time walking dungeon or something and with Flabby and I realize that I'm on a character that's not the same faction as whatever, whatever character he's using to run. I'm like, oh, right. <laughs> I forgot. It's just the, the random queued content. Initially, Shaman and Racial made the Horde better for raiding, so most serious rain guilds were Horde. I went Alliance because my friends were playing them, otherwise it would have been Horde. I think I was relieved that my guild was Alliance when I first joined Carbon, and that they'd kind of settled on Alliance, because that was the faction that I perf- I liked the races a little better on, on the whole. I did like a lot of Horde races. I liked um, Undead and Troll in particular. But, uh, I wanted to be a gnome. <laughs> I like gnomes and night elves. And draenei. I played Warcraft 2, wanted to be an ogre, settled for troll. Fell in love with the night elf lore, so I'm very cozy now, but I have such a soft spot for trolls. I've had some some delightful female troll hunters over the years. I spent a bunch of time on them in Cataclysm. I was a troll even before Warcraft. Don't remember why I joined Horton Cataclysm. The writing they make both sides look worse, don't care for it. Some of the undead areas made the horde look bad <laughs> to the horde. <laughs> there were definitely uh, quest lines in in the Forsaken areas where, as a horde player, you're like, um, I don't know about this one. <laughs> Enjoying leveling with the event, so much tempted to make a new troll, just because. But then, is it a troll warrior? Is it a troll hunter? Is it something else altogether? Love the undead starting area, so spooky. Yeah, I preferred the Alliance cities as well. I had a... A hard time uh, navigating. I would get lost in Undercity because it was very symmetrical and the elevators kind of annoyed me. And then I would get lost in Orgamar, or, or not lost, but I would just like travel inefficiently because I didn't like all the different vertical levels. Hunter would be cool. Thinking Shadow Priest. Is it even under city if you don't get lost? I did love an under city that you could go fishing in like lime green goop. That was fun to me. <laughs> I thought it was awesome that you could fish out of there. Will forever be annoyed by the fact that Stormwind has two auction houses, while Org has one in every district. I liked that about Org. I liked picking my favorite auction house for a given like character or bank to use. I was very partial to the Valley of Spirits, the troll area with the the water and the, the little troll huts on stilts. That's that's that was my go-to auctioneer. It was like not convenient because she was upstairs. <laughs> they were upstairs, but uh it was usually quiet. I wanted a place that wasn't busy. Yeah, Org has auctioneers in the valley. There's there's one in the Torrin area. There's one in the Troll area. There's obviously the one in the middle. There's also a whole auction house, like, in building in the valley of, what is it, Honor? Actually, I don't know the names of the different valleys, but the one with the, the, the hunter trainers and the, uh, and the, the big arena. But yeah, there's, they, the goblins had one as well, actually. Valley of Honor and the fishing guy. Yeah. I think the goblins had one. Didn't realize they had so many. That's odd.
Didn't even know it had two auction houses until the auction house dance floor event. Wonder why. Yeah, I don't know. It never really talked me into playing Horde. <laughs> the Alliance one and the main Horde one are so central that you don't really ever need to go to the ex the other ones unless you feel like you want to. I wonder if we'll get lucky. We got another half hour to try for this van. Weird thing about WoW. Not everything in the world is technically in the present. Yeah. Undercity and Teldrassil are both in that space where they're they're technically obliterated, but you can still go there. You just need to use the, the time travel thing. You farming bronze? No, I'm hoping to get a weapon drop. I want the Pandaren decorative fan. I've got a screenshot of it up here. I've uh I've already got everything for bronze. My character's fully upgraded. And the vendors are completely cleaned out. I've got an extra 116k bronze for nothing. I just want the weapon drops. One of my old school favorite places was the Netherwing Ledge. Chatham and Valley. Teach mine away. Yeah, a lot of people want the Brutosaur or some other kind of uh, summonable auctioneer to come back. It's definitely one of those things that if you have it... <laughs> You get very used to it. I am very spoiled. I always felt like Blizzard regretted putting it in the game. They caused a pretty big stink when they decided to take it off the vendor. Missed out on the long boy too. It's so useful. Ready for a barbershop mount. I wonder how often I would use a barbershop mount if I had one. You can change a lot of things about your character, and it is free. But it's not a I don't really go that often. Sometimes I would change my character's hair color, my druid's hair color to suit her transmog, but my gnome always has that same like red toned salmon pink. Always. My gnome's hair doesn't change. One day I hope Drakthir can choose their visage race through the barbershop. <laughs> Imagine having that many customization options. A gnome visage Drakthir would have been so cool. That might have helped me stay on them longer. I liked my visage form, but I, I missed being a gnome. I wanted to be a gnome again. Gnome is where the heart is, right? Uh, how much bronze do you need for all the weapons and gear? I don't remember what the number was. It was quite a bit. The weapons aren't actually on the vendor. You can't get the weapons for bronze. That's why we're still here. <laughs> It, it would also depend if you were looking to buy mounts. It would depend on how many of them you had already. What is your opinion on the scourge of modern humanity, Pickleball? We were talking about this. I thought it was yesterday. It's very popular here. People love Pickleball. And they're having fun and they're being active and they're making memories and there's no good reason for me to, to not like it. So naturally, I think it's a bit silly. <laughs> 
I'm a I'm a hater for no reason. It is not a defensible position. Um, there is nothing wrong with pickleball, but it has a funny name, <laughs> and it's new and popular, and therefore I am cranky. We definitely mentioned it. Beer be getting pickles. Yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with it at all. <laughs> I am being curmudgeonly in my in my dislike. They are so into it. Sometimes you'll be walking and you'll just hear people talking about it. And you're right. They're so into it, which is great. You know, it's wonderful to be excited and invested in your hobbies and you're sharing them with your friends and you're talking about it. That's awesome. <laughs> it just, it just sounds funny. Oh, looks like tennis. It's tennis, but it's like, you're not allowed to do as many cool things as you are in tennis. I don't think you're allowed to like hit the ball with the racket above like waist height. Um, so a lot of the really exciting power moves and things that you that happen in tennis aren't really part of pickleball. <laughs> Speaking of overhearing conversations, somebody, I was walking moose this morning, and I overheard a couple, and the uh, one of them was like loudly explaining to the other one how about about basically like the AI singularity. I guess <laughs> they're talking about artificial intelligence training itself until it's millions of times smarter than anything else on earth etc etc and uh i don't really know enough about it like i i have concerns about ai too but like it was just one of those things where you see a couple walking along and one of them's like going into it and the other one's like uh-huh oh mm -hmm. like he was just on a tear great e-trade commercial they call it <laughs> tennis for babies for adults I do think it's interesting how, um, and maybe it's not entirely because of pickleball. Maybe the challengers maybe had to do with it too. But a lot of activewear fashion trends have leaned towards um, tennis inspired and I guess pickleball inspired outfits. There's a lot of uh, like tennis skirts and uh, the shoes and like the, the types of things that you might wear to play pickleball that are like very front and center in activewear retailers right now. Whereas once upon a time, it was mainly like running gear or yoga gear or whatever. You can still get all of it, of course, but it's just having a moment. As a sea hadalite, if pickleball could take a dang chill pill, that would be great. I think it's largely fine. I might be more annoyed if I was trying to, like, play tennis and my the courts there was like a the courts were just flooded by people using them for something else i think sometimes there are court disputes but like as long as everybody books them and everything i don't know it should be fine just be considerate of other people every time i go out in the city there's always just tons of people that are just out doing stuff it's very inspiring people are biking everywhere and it's not just like they're out for like an athletic bike ride, although people are certainly doing that too. But you'll see people with like boxes of documents strapped to the back of their bike or like they're towing like a trailer with four children packed into it or like, you know, there's whole families on tandem bikes and stuff and they're dropping their kids off at school or camp or whatever. Like people have groceries strapped onto the back like they're they're just doing like regular everyday life stuff, but also just like scooting this bike through the city. Enjoy people watching. And then you can go by like all the athletic courts and people just throwing together pickup games of all kinds of stuff and it's fun. Always thought it was like flunky ball, common drinking game at music festivals. My favorite bit of doing Dragon Blight is when it's about kissing frogs and Cadcar starts talking about remembering the horrors of Northrend. <laughs> or starts talking like he's remembering the horrors of Northrend. I mean, we did have to kiss a lot of frogs. I did. I used to do that daily, almost every day. Less than two weeks from launch. Mm -hmm. People commonly hang out, lounge in public parks. Yeah, depending on the park and the time, um, they might be <laughs> up to different activities, but 
yeah especially um, the beaches get very popular in the summertime big part of city culture here Not my favorite day right now. You can craft under the Warband Bank, but you can't buy vendor stuff with items. That's kind of annoying. People just post up with blankets, have picnics or wait or whatever. People must do that here as well. I do that sometimes in uh there's a there's a there's a park I like for that, but you gotta pick your park a bit carefully. <laughs> Neat gives lots of energy. Where's my fan? Vogelin, thank you very much for the three-month resub. Appreciate it. Glad to have you here. I have a problem. I have no more pickles. <laughs> Where have the pickles gone? Curious coins from Legion or Warbrand tradable? Always had a bunch, but never enough in one tune to buy them out. There you go. Parks in Boston. A lot of them not actually that green. More centered in the city. Not as quick to get to. The one thing I miss is having, there are trails around and there are hikes you can do in and around the city, but there's not a ton of stuff that I can like really easily walk to without going through like quite a bit of city. I just gotta get more used to just packing the dog into the car and then driving to the uh, the mountains or whatever. Parks and night weather, very busy. Maltese Pass, lots of people walking and biking. Mm -hmm. I love seeing all the dogs. <laughs> I like dog watching. And my dog also likes dog watching. Although you can't let him get you can't let him get too hyped about it, or else he'll cause a scene. I don't know if this is going to drop for us this morning. Taking the last week of August off, might do a day trip. Exist in the trails. That sounds really nice. Pack some good some good food. Get out there. Oh. Get so busy on the weekend. Yeah. I I always prefer given the option to do um That's one of the my favorite things about taking Monday Tuesdays off as opposed to weekends is that if I do go out fishing or hiking or whatever, it's often a lot quieter. Maybe not always so much in the summer, but usually a bit quieter in the weekdays. Has Moose started his doggy obstacle course training yet? Listen, if you count the way he can fling himself over the couch, then he's been training. <laughs> he's actually quite, quite accurate with how he lands. You could be sitting on the couch and they'd be like, where's the dog? And then you hear the thundering and then you see him running and he takes a flying leap and completely clears you and lands on the other side <laughs> on the couch. He's pretty good. The first couple times he did it as a puppy, I was convinced I was about to die. Um, but he's never landed on me. He's never crashed. <laughs> have you ever listened to the new metal classic hybrid theory by Lincoln Park? I must have. In Cape Cod for the week of early access. Oh, that sounds beautiful. Should disappear on the Friday of early access. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a good boy. He's cute. You can put um, some, we've got some toys that are like treat puzzles basically, but some of them are kind of like way too hard. Like he can lick the treat, but if it's like an actual physical treat that needs to fall out of it, there's basically, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so we'll give it to him and it'll keep him busy for a while. But eventually you can tell he's getting frustrated because he'll start to like whine a little bit and then he'll bring the toy to one of us, plop it on our lap and look up with his big old puppy eyes like, help. <laughs> Mom, dad, it won't go. <laughs> And then we'll like twist it or, or bend it or whatever it is that we need to do with our pesky opposable thumbs to get the treat to come out for him and then he'll eat it. 
He has me trained pretty well. Have you ever wanted to listen to it completely made of Mario 64 sounds? Oh. <laughs> that does sound fun. I feel like I would enjoy Cape Cod. Is it possible that I think I would like it just because I have that shirt that's like talking about Cape Cod ocean fish? So it makes me think that there's fun fishing out there. <laughs> Get a nice, uh, nice cabin beach. I was watching a stream VOD I missed. Appreciated how y'all were digging in with the pet picture selection of the Squirrel Squad Discord. I am now caught up. It's great in the summer. I'm out on Cape Cod. You would definitely enjoy it. I like birds. I like fish. I like beach. I like a good walk. Original original streamer likes long walks on beach. <laughs> Do enjoy beach walks in the winter. I like just sitting at the beach and just watching the water for a long time, especially when you're in like an introspective mood and you want a good think. I don't think I would ever own have enough money to actually like live beachfront. But if I ever lived like a reasonable, manageable like walk from it, I would do that a lot. <laughs> I do it sometimes here, but I have to be pretty committed to it. It's a pretty good walk. Beach reading, beach walking. Ocean's so wonderful, want to get back to it. We have so many beautiful beaches here in the city. Especially if you're not trying to like tan on a sandy beach and you don't mind kind of like a rocky one. There's lots of lovely little hidden ones tucked away because the whole the whole south end of the island is like bays and points and coves and my thing is going on walks every Sunday morning. Sometimes she gets me out there with her. Grateful that we're on island, have access to the river. Also lovely. It sounds nice. scale of Van Island's impressive. I know there's, like, I'll, most of the island, I probably, even though I've, I've lived here, I grew up here, I've probably never been to most of it. Or most of, most of, even, like, the, the places where people live. I've gone to a bunch of the main ones at least once, but I don't even know if I've ever been to Tofino. Maybe. Reason you farm in this stuff? I'm trying to get this specific weapon transmog to drop, this offhand black fan that I've got a screenshot of above my camera here. It's the Pandaren decorative fan. It's remix exclusive. And I'm trying to make it, <laughs> trying to make it drop. Brother's in the process of downsizing. Bought a little two bedroom house, Surfside, Texas. Wanna go to Dallas Road to look for Dallasite? I want to go all the way to Port Hardy just because. I feel like that would be a good trip for me to take. I would want to take like some time doing it though so I could like visit a little bit in all the different places on the way up. And also I don't know if I have the stamina. <laughs> I don't I'm not like a good long driver. I don't uh, I don't have a ton of patience for it. I would at the very least need a real good music album to put on. Never thought I would want to live my adult life on Cape Cod, because that's where I'm from, but the closer I get to 30, there's nothing more that I want. Too expensive, though. I can relate to that pretty, pretty heavily. Fun to take your time and dawdle, explore the towns. I think it's fun. Oh, it totally is. Coombs is very fun. There's a there's a little, little place with a market with goats on the roof that's quite famous. You'll see people with, like, bumper stickers showing, like, the goat on the roof. Usually pooping off the side. <laughs> I've been there before. A relative bought me a puppet there once when I was a kid. Cat on the lap, goat on the roof. I should be clear, they have grass on the roof too. That's why the goats are up there. <laughs> it's, a, it's a whole thing. They're not just like imprisoned on concrete. In a fence, going back, get us down. 
<laughs> oh no. Do you have a favorite album from childhood that you still like listening to today? Ooh. Um, <laughs> my music tastes have kind of evolved since childhood. I don't know if I put any of them on. I guess I think the closest would be the Bare Naked Ladies Greatest Hits. I will still put those on. And I, that was a CD that I had as a kid. But uh, everything else I will visit out of nostalgia, but not usually uh, for very long. Insync. I was always a little bit more into the Backstreet Boys than Insync. I liked them. I liked them both. But I was all about the Backstreet album. <laughs> what else did you have? Yeah, when I was like a kid, like sort of like 11 and under, 10 and under, it was about Britney Spears, um, who my mom worried was was too too sexy, but you know, I uh, I loved the music. Christina Aguilera, Backstreet Boys, of course. A little bit of S Club 7. <laughs> Spice Girls. Yeah, Spice Girls was a big deal. Um, and then once I got into like my teenage years, I was more about um, rock and rock and metal music in it, along a fairly big spectrum. Yeah, <laughs> Cradle, of, Cradle of Filth era was kind of when I was like 16, 17. Also, Crazy Frog had a huge moment when I was like 12. <laughs> Cradle of Filth, too much for me. I may have been trying to prove a point. I think I was trying to like be a real metalhead or something. Um, I was more into the... the Breaking Benjamin was more my speed at that age. I had a Cradle album. And then also there was like some like symphonic metal and melodic metal. Um, In Flames. I had a few In Flames albums. Crazy Frog burn CDs. Crazy Frog borrowed iPod mixes. That was the stuff. Don't. Uh, I have. I downloaded a few of them again at a nostalgia, but I can't. Uh, I can't just sit down and listen to them. It. Uh, it takes me back too much. I've got boxes from my childhood that I don't like to open very much, and uh, it's a it's a good way to crack them open. In flames are amongst my favorite. I think I've seen him live live five or six times. Wow. Uh, not so not so much with the Green Day. Billy Talent um, was the the punk edgiest, the punkest thing, the closest thing to punk rock that I would listen to, including once in Calgary, and I ran into Ben Ruki while leaving the venue. <laughs> I kind of wish they would bring back iPods. Kind of want one. Mm. Yeah, I was. A, I I loved those when I was growing up. Those were they were so cool when I was a teenager. I had a few a few of them over the years. If you went to a concert today, who would you see? That's the thing, isn't it? <laughs> That's the question. Maybe they even have music on them. My sister was the first one to get an iPod. She got one of those ones that had like the big hard disk in them, like the big chunky heavy ones. Um, I didn't get one. I was too cool for it because she had one. So I was, I was burning MP3 CDs and then playing them in an MP3 CD player that I was convinced was the future. It, it wasn't, but um, I had that for a few years and then eventually I wised up and I ended up getting as a gift or something, a iPod. Uh, Nano, the little square one, and I was big, big fan of that. Big fond, big fan. I went all in on mini discs. I thought it was super cute. I would tell anybody that listened, it was like, listen, it's not a regular CD. A regular CD is going to have like 20 songs on it, but this is an MP3 CD and it has like a hundred. <laughs> I still had to click through each one. There was no great UI for, for browsing through them. 
I did not have a Zune, but I had a few friends that were that were Zune adopters that were convinced they were going to kill the iPod. My uh, my all my friends in school were Apple haters. Um, it wasn't until it wasn't until my my early twenties that uh that I I met nerds that would engage with Apple products, and then I tried them, and then I liked them. But when I was a teenager, they were all they were very against it. I had a Zune mainly because my friends had iPods that kept breaking. Getting so excited for my AA driven MP3 player, I made a braided rope to have around my neck instead of in my pocket. Oh man, the homemade MP3 player lanyard. <laughs> you guys are making me nostalgic for a time I didn't even really enjoy that much. Those huge iPods with the wheel on them? Oh yeah. The click wheel was iconic. <laughs> That is how nostalgia works. <laughs> you forget everything you didn't like about it. Ownership versus convenience type of deal. Lanyard, that was the word I couldn't find. <laughs> Lanyards were a big deal in school because we had to carry one around in high school and it would have our student ID on it. And all of the nerds would wear them around their necks and then all the cool kids would stick the lanyard card in your pocket and then you would have like the lanyard hanging out of your pocket like swinging off your hip that was like the cool thing to do <laughs> i think i wore it around my neck for like the first day of school and then i like took a look around and then went nope <laughs> into the pocket it goes or like the back pocket but sometimes you would lose it out of the back pocket like you would stick it in the back pocket of your jeans and then you wouldn't notice it get caught on the chair as you were leaving and then you'd be like oh geez i lost my student id i'm in big trouble <laughs> Do you remember with wallets with chains to secure them? Oh yeah, that was a that was a whole thing. Those were those were very cool amongst my friends. Hanging out of baggy pants, yet. Yeah. It was just boys at the time. I didn't it was it was the boys the boys would have the wallet chain and we thought that it was extremely cool. <laughs> Still do the chain wallet. I don't remember what they thought they were protecting it from. Nobody was trying to pickpocket anybody at <laughs> that school. Theft, of course, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to um, shred some of this gear, make some room. Look at this. It's a mess. Miss the chain wallet. More of a goth fashion choice, though. Yeah. Steampunk styles also had a big moment when I was in high school, and I remember I once got some major girlfriend points by getting my boyfriend at the time a pocket watch for his birthday on a chain um because that was like <laughs> that that was the thing <laughs> not protecting anything it's just the same wallet i've had since i was 13 back then thought it looked pretty cool i'm pretty sure someone had a monocle too <laughs> oh man you guys are you guys are making me nostalgic Top hat. Mm, parties only. Top hats are for parties only. Fedoras were worn to school. That was a thing. That happened a lot. They thought they looked classy like the older gentlemen that would wear them, but they were wearing their fedoras with their regular jeans and baggy t-shirts. <laughs> I had a word for the chain wallet kids, but I cannot repeat it in this family from Mr. <laughs> a lot of guys wore fedoras in my school too. Yeah, it was a it was a popular choice. It wasn't a widespread choice. There were definitely kids that would not be caught dead in them. <laughs> but I was friends with the kids that were wearing them. I'm pretty sure I had one at one point. It wasn't like an everyday kind of thing. But he had to have a fedora. <laughs> uh shall we clean out clean this out a bit? I'm a bit disappointed that we managed to get this many <laughs> this many gear. This much gear, not not the book offhand though. I guess with this much gear, we've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten weapons. One, two, three, four offhands. Four of them were offhands, but none of them were the offhand that we wanted. So I think I'm just old enough to have missed that trend in high school. What was uh what was the big thing when you were in high school? What was the the fashion memory that that comes to mind? 
I know that fedoras got a bad rep when it was trilby hats the kids were actually wearing. That is, that does sound true. I was this many years old when learning that the small pocket of jeans is for those watches. I don't think I knew that. Sometimes I would fit a single small coin in the small pocket of the jeans just to feel like I was using it for something. Mine was the Sony Walkman. It was awesome. Nothing really stands out. <laughs> yeah, saggy pants definitely still had a were, were a thing when I was in school. It wasn't everybody, but there were definitely uh, kids that would get in trouble for <laughs> having their pants like fully beneath their bums. I, I was against that trend. I thought they looked dumb. I don't think I was afraid to say so either. <laughs> Depending on who I was talking to and how close they were to me. Hmm. The pants, the belt. I don't know if anyone was, had belts. They might have done. But yeah, their boxers would be on full display. That was hilarious to see them walk. Low-hanging baggy pants for the boys. Industrial pants with pockets everywhere. I kind of miss those. I could go for a pair of cargo pants now. <laughs> they would be so handy for fishing. I, whenever I come home from fishing, I'm like unpacking my pockets from uh, from having been out there. And I always have like soft baits in my pockets. Because um, I'll, I'll just have a couple of them on me so that if, I'm, if I've got myself up to like kind of an annoying to get to spot, I can like switch out and try different things without needing to go back to the, the bait binder. They're so practical. Stuff a fit. Yeah. <laughs> no. No fish in my pockets. Big raver elephant pants, though. Can't judge. Yeah, it's not like my fashion choices were unimpeachable. <laughs> it wasn't with it. Still not with it. Oh, I don't even know what with it is anymore. I feel like yeah, youth fashion is fragmented somewhat. Like it's more niche than it was. There's less of a monolith and there's more micro trends. Mm. Pull a salmon out of your trousers. <laughs> Been flannel maxing for too long. Cargo shorts are the unsung heroes of today. <sighs> Culture itself is fractured due to micro targeted content. Yeah. The the trend that I'm all about right now is um is uh belt bags, fanny packs. Super into it. <laughs> I thought I had cracked the code when I started wearing crossbody purses instead of shoulder purses because I was sick of my purses falling off of my shoulder and having to like constantly like hitch them back up. And then crossbody bags were the thing. But even those are kind of like, they get tangled and I don't know, like I have a hard time with them getting in and out of my car. So now having the thing just like strapped to my hips or like across my chest or whatever, usually my hips because I'm not that cool. Uh, with just enough space for like, you know, keys, my little card case, phone, maybe, dog treats, you're set. <laughs> you're going. I'm all about it. I've got a bunch of them. Fanny packs in the mall recently. Yeah, they're having a moment. I'm a big, I'm a big fan. It is a practical trend. Plus, I see people wearing them. I see all kinds of people wearing them. I see young people with them. I see, like, elder, like older people with them. I see very old people with them. You know, they're, they seem to span generations. <laughs> Love my new fanny pack for cycling. Otherwise, standard backpack for day-to-day. -day. Those are the most unfortunately named things. You gotta choose between either a fanny or a bum bag. It's... Just call it a belt bag. It's fine. <laughs> Practical trends. Thought they would be good for jogging. Have to be pretty tight. I have a flat one that is for jogging that I pretty much just put my phone and maybe a key into. Um, and it, that one's nice because it, it, it stays flat on me so it's not bouncing around. I have different ones for wearing as just like an actual like dog walking bag or a purse if I'm just like going shopping or something. I like my European carry-all. I don't know what that is. It's a staple of the mall walker starter kit. <laughs> yeah, Yo, you can catch me in those new balances too. <laughs> Yeah, this is, uh, this is not dropping for me today. Well, Shellfish, I'm going to leave you out here, and then we'll have to decide next week whether or not we want to keep at this or if we want to pick a different goal and move on to a new activity. In any case, wrap it!
wrapping up for today. Thank you very much for spending this time with me. I appreciate your company. I'll be back. Not tomorrow, not Tuesday, but Wednesday for our final week of streams before early access. That's kind of crazy. Appreciate you guys, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.